Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are John 17. Let's look at the prayer of Jesus. Let's start off from there. John chapter 17. We'll read from verse 13 down to 21. There's just one verse, but let me just lay a foundation even as we build. Let your heart be open. It's not only important to hear the word of God, you must always be in a position to receive it. As many as receive him, he gave them power. The power is given only to those who receive. Hallelujah. John 17 verse 13. And now this is Jesus praying by the way. Jesus is praying, talking to his father. Um, he was shortly to depart to begin his passion, the activities that led him to the cross. And now he's praying, verse 13. And now come I to thee. Please listen. And these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. 14. We'll run down till 21. I have given them thy word and the world had hated them. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. This is a message on its own. We can dwell for weeks here just trying to unravel this mystery. This is Jesus praying. But that thou shouldest keep us them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so, I also send them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they might also be sanctified through the truth. 20. Now listen. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Say, Jesus prayed for me. Or say, Jesus prayed for me. When he was praying this prayer, he added you to the list. He said, I'm not just praying for these immediate disciples, but there are many who will receive and believe and come into the truth as a result of their word. 21 is my verse of emphasis. He says that they may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they may also be one in us why to the end that the world may believe that thou sent me everybody say that they may be one i'm really speaking passionately to the body of christ tonight and this concerns every one of us because we're part of it i want to challenge one of the things the bible says the fivefold ministry was supposed to address when you read ephesians the fourth chapter beginning from verse 10 the Bible says when he led captivity captive, he went down to hell and the Bible records that he gave gifts to men. Are we together now? He said he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers and all of that. And then he says he gave this fivefold for certain things. For the equipping, perfecting, maturing of the saints. That the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry. 
what's the work of the ministry kingdom advancement right then it says that we all together will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ so it is god's desire that such a thing will exist in the body of christ called the unity of the faith hallelujah the unity of the faith a level of oneness in the spirit that the church will have one voice that when we speak creation human beings government systems will acknowledge that which we are communicating because the church has come through the fivefold ministry to a point of alignment where our voice becomes one are we together now one of the chiefest of all the arsenals of darkness in destroying the church is the proposition that 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 mindset that has been injected into the church that makes the pursuit of god look as though it was a personal revelation that was given to just a person as though god is not interested in the corporate growth of the body are we together now so we have individuals coming with revelations and that's supposed to be the program of god that's how it comes it comes through a person but it is for a people are we together now and this this strategy by darkness has destroyed the body of christ because we have not been able to attain onto that point of unity maturity and perfection it's been a mighty tool that satan has used and so in the next two or three weeks we're going to be examining the concept of of uh, this statement that they may be one the concept of the unity of the faith but to start off tonight i want to um take on you would call it a subtopic i call it three great errors three great errors i will sing of the wonders of your word i will sing out for joy i will sing of the wonders of your word and i will forever sing your praise yes we will forever sing your praise give us revelation tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ exodus chapter 25 let's start off from there three great errors that i believe has caused havoc in the body of christ has sabotaged the spiritual progress of many believers many ministries many well-meaning people who love the lord and desire the pursuit of godliness exodus 25 and verse 40 this was the construction of the tabernacle media you need to help us very very fast um, today hallelujah i like us to read together one to read and look that thou make them after what their pattern which was showed thee in the mount if you can have amplified that would be great hallelujah it says that you ensure that everything that is done to make up that temple is done according to pattern listen when it comes to spiritual progress and spiritual advancement the believer is not left to his options to guess his way and choose his method of spiritual growth and his method of understanding god are we together that degree of autonomy is not given to the believer there is a pattern there is a pathway there is a system with which god desires to be known and you cannot create your own pathway to the knowledge of god several people have gotten into error in an attempt to create different pathways 
to accessing God but there is a system it's consistent with the character of God that every time God gives you an assignment or wants to show you a dimension of himself he shows you how you will walk into it in this instance he revealed to Moses I want to build a tabernacle but there are specifics it was on account of that that the hand of the Lord came upon Bezalel and released upon him the spirit of creativity and craftsmanship. And here God is giving a warning again. He's saying, make sure under no circumstance should you become emotional about this building of the temple. Do not get to a point where you pity the people so much that you say, no, no, no. Instead of using gold, gold is not available. It will take us a long time to go and, uh, and, and source for it and smelt the gold and all of that. Let's just manage this. God is saying, when it comes to this, you keep emotions and sentiments. There is a prescribed pathway. Are we together? It's amazing how many people attempts to cultivate formulas and methods and all kinds of ways that they believe will lead to Christ. That's why Jesus ended that confusion once and for all. He said, I am the way. I lead you to the truth and I give you life. Hallelujah. The concept of patterns is something that has intrigued me personally in my work with God ministries have failed because they have ignored the patterns of god families have failed because they have ignored the patterns of god listen everybody say spiritual patterns say it, spiritual patterns there is a prescribed formula for doing anything in this kingdom hallelujah there is a spiritual formula for being a father the only way you can become an effective father in the kingdom is to subscribe to that formula. When you guess your own method, it has severe side effects. There is a pattern to become blessed and wealthy in the kingdom. You guess your own pattern or listen to the garbages that are marketed around, there will be a side effect. Let me tell you something. You see the failure of governments across territories from Nigeria to other parts of the country is a result of our guessing different pathways of managing the earth. When God designed man, he gave a pattern. Are we together now? Our refusal to pay attention to the patterns of God is what is responsible for many tragic events in families. When you see a family, for instance, where it is the mother who is fending for the children and the father is there crossing his leg doing nothing for instance that is a violation of the patterns of god and the bible says whosoever breaks the hedge please pay attention the serpent is authorized to strike so your only basis of fortification in the kingdom is your subscription, your alignment to divine patterns concerning every matter. Hallelujah. Now, we live in a world there is no time in modern history where we have a beehive of arrogant people living and walking upon the face of the earth. Everyone with his own um self-exaltation we pride ourselves in intellectual accomplishments we pride ourselves in our social status and all kinds of things and these false accolades have brought us to a point where we believe we can be god outside of the christ you see let me tell you something when the new testament believer derives the relevance of his entire work in christ any activity at all you try to initiate that is outside of the authority, the supervision and the jurisdiction of the Christ is error, is disalignment and is apostasy, a deviation from God's patterns. Are we together now? There is a pattern. 
for everything in life. When God anoints you and calls you into ministry, there is a pattern. When God anoints you and calls you into leadership, there is a pattern. Now the trouble there is, we receive the call and choose our pattern. Are we together now? Think how many times the people in the Bible refused to move until God told them how to do it. Moses is standing before the Red Sea and he knows the Red Sea can part. He knows there is a provision in the might of God to deal with that situation. Now Moses as a person did not know how it will happen. But one thing is that in the multifaceted dimension of God's wisdom there is a provision for dealing with that predicament. Are we together now? And so Moses had to pay attention to stay with God and God spoke to him in Exodus 14. Tell the people to move forward. Stretch your rod. Part that sea with it. When they got to Jordan, you would think it was the same instruction given to Moses. But Joshua had to wait to receive another pattern on how to part the same sea. You went for a meeting and the Lord told you, let everybody lift his hands. Then you go for another one and assume if God said everybody lift his hands, that's what he's saying now. And he said, everybody lift your hands. And nothing happens. And he said, Lord, what is this? And he says, I'm a God of patterns. Is God speaking to us? There were times when the nation of Israel were told to stand still. Don't do anything. God will fight for you. Hold your peace. There were times he said, prepare for war. You are going to fight. Patterns. Our inability to understand. Listen, please. I pray that God will open your eyes. This is not even where I'm going to. When the Bible says all things are possible. Let me explain to you what that means. In God's multifaceted wisdom, there is a solution for everything. Only if you can wait until you receive the blueprint for addressing that current condition. Are we together now? The Bible is a compendium of spiritual patterns. How God approaches things in life. His methodology, his approach to the issues of life. God's pattern is that, listen, if you do not have love, for instance, even your faith works by love. That's God's pattern. God's pattern of prosperity is that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. The world has their pattern. Cheat, loot, kill, hoard resources. Are we together now? The world prides itself in achievement. In the kingdom, it is God that gives men the power to get well. There are patterns. Our cultures have their patterns. For instance, they tell you when you get married, beat your wife in such a way that she will understand the possibilities that are in you. Then start treating her well. Are we together now? So that if at any point she wants to trivialize your masculinity, the memory of what had happened will put her into order. That's a world's pattern. But God says, uh -uh. wives submit. Husbands, love your wives. And he didn't leave you to love the way you like. He said, as Christ, love the church. Are we together now? Let me tell you something. Dear, our lives are largely a consistent activity of violating kingdom patterns consistently in God's kingdom if you want to be great you must be humble in the world system you try to like a political party you try to gather together loyalists who will exalt you but here's how we, are, we rise in the kingdom if I be lifted up not if you I will draw all men are we together now? Divine patterns. Let me show you one more scripture. And then we'll begin to talk about the errors. Ezekiel 43. When I found this, this was, this was powerful. I mean, it blessed me. Ezekiel 43 from verse 7 to 12. 
Ezekiel 43. Is God blessing us already? There are divine patterns. Ezekiel 43, 7 to 12. It says, And he the Lord said unto me, Son of man, listen. He said, This is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. He said, And my holy name, the house of Israel, shall be no more profane. Neither they nor their kings by their idolatrous halotry nor by the dead bodies and monuments of their kings verse 8 nor by setting their threshold and so on and so forth let's go to 9 listen he said now let them put away their idolatrous halotry and the dead bodies and monuments of their kings far from me and i will dwell in their midst forever 10 son of man listen he said show the temple by your description of it to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquity that they may see how much they have deviated from my ordinances and my patterns he says and let them measure accurately its appearance and plan next verse and if they are ashamed of all that they have done make known unto them the form of the temple and the arrangement of it this was a prophetic language He's speaking prophecy here. It exists and its entrance and the whole form of it and its ordinances and all its forms and all its laws and write it down in their sight so that they may keep the whole form of it and all the ordinances of it and do them. He said, look, 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 look. These guys are guessing around. They are guessing. The reason why my presence is not made manifest is that there is a specific spiritual pattern like like an organogram that if done well will give me space to find expression when when balaam was called by balak to go and curse the nation of israel when he got to the mountain the bible says he saw that there was a spiritual formation are we together now the nation of Israel were arranged according to their tribes with the ark of God being at the center. That was a pattern that was given. And he looked and he said, ah, these people are blessed. I cannot curse them. He tried to curse them, but the dexterity of the pattern refused the curse from coming out. Are we together now? He that breaks the hedge, he that violates the the serpent not may strike the serpent is waiting at the mercy of your alignment waiting for your disalignment to authorize his operations he said tell them i want you to give them the dimensions because you see a man when you read the new testament the bible tells us that we are we are temples temples and so in the similitude of this that was revealed to prophet Ezekiel, he's saying there are dimensions, there are patterns. Listen. This spiritual alignment works like magic. Look at me. Please look at me. I want to talk to you honestly. Brothers and sisters, you may never know to what degree your alignment can authorize the activities of heaven around your life elijah the prophet understood divine patterns when it was time to call the presence of god he didn't roam around guessing his options he said bring me 12 stones because he was operating with the god of the covenant bring me 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of israel he put a sacrifice upon it he said bring me water and there was blood upon it and he called down the God of heaven and God came instantly. Are we together now? The patterns of God. There has been largely a deviation from God's pattern. You see, when you look at a life that after prayer, after fasting, you lay hands on the person four gallons of oil and the person does not change and there is no breakthrough let me tell you among other reasons 
that person is in by default living in disalignment to the ordinances and the patterns of the kingdom let me tell you something please come you see ba if this guy has a spirit manipulating him whereas by default his heart is stayed on violating the truths and the principles of the kingdom no matter what kind of deliverance i do the devil will only be playing caricature and mockery with him are we together now because the devil knows that the edge is broken he can find expression we see this in the book of job satan came to job and found out that the hedge was closed and he went back to god and said allow me allow me to be able to penetrate and find expression so i can pray for this guy and lay hands on him are we together now but he will go back into consistently violating the patterns of god the pattern of god you see someone sent me a text thank you someone sent me a text today and said um he said i'm tired of my life i don't even know what is happening in our family man of god i believe one word from you would change our financial situation and i say it's not true no i wish listen i i can prophesy and it can bring breakthrough but that breakthrough is like pouring water in a basket there is a pattern that authorizes that breakthrough to leave the family are we together one they are not honoring the lord with their time no, no 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 let's even leave honoring the lord with your time number one their hearts like the macedonians are not even with god it says they draw nigh to me with their mouths their lips but their hearts are far away from me are we together now tithing is zero even when it is zero even when it is there is a bribe they walk up to god with anger and resentment spend everything and calculate what they spent later on and now say i spent Ten thousand. Okay, God, how much do I even have? Two thousand. Okay, take one thousand. This is your tithe. That kind of attitude will keep that man in poverty. And then to talk of other principles, you do nothing, you get nothing. Are we together? That idea of something for nothing is an illusion, it's nonsense. So that man is violating this pattern. And when he comes for miracle service, in his mind, he's thinking, Oh God, let this guy call me and prophesy to me and say, Your level is changing. And all through the preaching time, he's impatient. He's just waiting for where we say, Rise up on your feet. Because to him, he believes every other thing I'm saying is nonsense. This man, you are happy. There's water in front of your table. That's why you don't know what is wrong with me. Listen, it is because of this that we have very little appetite to stay with the word and understand the principles of the spirit and one of the errors that is even coming to the body of christ right now is the replacement supposedly to replace the word ministry with what we know as prayer ministry just follow me i have something for you tonight are we together now and so it is good to pray but many people convince themselves and think because i am praying look i know so many ignorant prayer warriors who whose lives is not producing any result their frustration is to the roof because they want to replace one kingdom truth with another are we together now we just finished seven days prayer and fasting but there are there are patterns there are principles that you must learn listen please pay attention to what i'm saying if you are still guessing your life you are going to be in trouble please come here jimmy let me use two people benga come uh, who promise come let me just use these three people come sir now watch this these are great men of God. These are three great mighty people. Listen. If I give all of them a mic and I say in five minutes. I, I'm not going to do that. Just an example. I say, Ejimi, what is the key to the blessing in the kingdom? Maybe that's the question he has to ask you. Can you stand up 
and articulate. The same way I look at you and I say, how do you make jollof rice? I say, Abba, get a pen and paper. Get one cup of water. Go and buy this and that. Add onion. Don't put it too early. Do this and that. All of those rules. Are we together now? I come to Benga and I say, how is, it, is there a possibility that a man can walk in divine health? Oh yes, the Bible says it by his stripes we are healed. Are you living in it? No. That means something is wrong. And the problem is never from God. Can he teach you and guide you as though giving you a formula? Are we together now? Number three, I meet promise and I say promise. Can favor work in my life every day and every time? Is there such a reality in a man's work with God? That based on an understanding and a, an anointing that comes upon your life, you can walk in favor. I can call one more person and say, can you show us the path of advancement and progress in the spirit? Can you teach me what to do such that after 10 years, I'm still moving forward regardless of what happens? Everyone say patterns. Please look at me. Brothers and sisters, your spiritual growth is not all about getting revelations you do not understand. It's about understanding the construction. You have to know how the kingdom is built, the systems of God's kingdom, to master the laws with which you will use to command results in this territory. Otherwise, no matter what else you do, it's only a matter of time. You'll be frustrated. I guarantee you. You can jump around and act like you're moving forward. Ten years down the line. Because this is why you find out that so many people, this guy starts well, after three or five children, he's angry. He cannot remember the message he preached ten years ago because he only prepared it for preaching. He preached it powerfully but that truth has not been seated in him what do you know which pattern of the kingdom do you understand that brings you at peace with creation if somebody looks at you now and say mama i'm going to a herbalist tonight and i assure you you see this fowl that i'm holding in my hand is for you we are going to kill you this night I want to ask you a question koinonia what will you do i know what many of you will do you will call me or you will call benga or any of the leaders <laughs> apostle somebody is, is daring i'm a member of koinonia that's why you will stay first you see let me tell you look up look up listen if this is how it continues becoming i'm not helping you i'm only it's like a musician coming for a show. That's what is happening. The goal of these teachings all the time is not to make you keep saying, my, this guy is an anointed man of God. No, there is something that is supposed to be transferred to you. Are we together? Like a button. At a point, you should be able to hold it. That which we have seen, that which we have heard, now you handle it and you can go places with it. I know it. I know how this thing works. Somebody looks at you and says, you are a failure. Continue praying in tongues. And you laugh and say, no, I'm not just a tongue talker. I know the patterns of God. I understand it. Listen, I don't care what you are doing that you are calling spiritual growth. If you are not understanding the patterns of the kingdom, the days that will come will frustrate your Christian experience. Look at what is happening, for instance, in the economy now. 1,200 naira or there about one gallon of oil. Now, now, the reality is that that's, that's very painful. But have you got the light that shines in the night? In the midst of this cry, some people have never had it this good. What is responsible for it? Are we together? There seems to be a time when a spirit comes upon the body of Christ and people start getting lukewarm and cold. 
even preachers I, sometimes i really find it funny a man of god comes on stage and says look uh we're going to just review what we have been teaching because he's stranded he has not mastered the key to continuous growth in the spirit and so he has exhausted every message four months into the year he's tired and then he comes and says well um why are you put looking at me like that it's not like i didn't prepare i've been busy you think ministries and then he starts venting his anger because he has gassed out he does not know that there is a formula in the spirit that can keep men on fire 24 hours believe me when i say this that when people are drowning spiritually right a man who used to walk in miracles and power five years ago five years later is, is barely trying to pray for headache something happened his inability to understand how to sustain the anointing is drying him up are we together now please look at me what you do not know in the kingdom should be your pursuit at this point that's how to grow you don't just open your devotional and say today let me read second kings i've not read kings in a long time you are not growing you are convincing yourself that because others are seeing you read the bible then when you finish you just walk around pray for two hours in tongues just stroll around and blah, 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 one hour blah, 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 two, two hours and you just say oh that's enough i'm growing you are not growing believe me you are not growing it's just religion because your life and the lack of spiritual evidence will show that there is no progress bless you guys please i'd like you to pray in one minute and say lord make my growth constructive pray inside and outside and all those following us online pray lord make my growth constructive i'm tired of comparing myself with people and convincing myself that i'm growing whereas i am not growing the difference between a general and one who just entered the army is is access to mysteries access to patterns he understands the art of war he knows what to do he knows how to put fear in his opponent and the enemy spiritual growth is not haphazard you can lay hold on eternal life you can lay hold on the precepts of the kingdom if that is not happening no matter how you convince yourself you are not growing listen please look at me to grow spiritually is not to know how to preach there are many people who have studied homiletics and they know nothing about spiritual growth to grow spiritually it's not to get to the point where you can now start writing books look even an unbeliever is smart enough you can go online what does it take intellectually speaking to prepare a nice sermon if i tell you to preach on faith are you so daft that you cannot go and get messages on faith and listen to one and get some things and look at one or two scriptures remove some things you don't believe and just arrange it and come and stand and say okay we are preaching on faith and deliver an intelligent message and at the end somebody is saying this is amazing i've never had this i thought the greek word was pistis now you are bringing another word wow and then you leave with envelope and believe that that envelope is a sign it's an authorization that you are making progress then they will invite you for another meeting are we together you see how the deception grows they now say oh ebenezer please there's one small prayer meeting i don't know if you can just come and bless us you are the one who you believe you are growing so you are coming on let's all pray one hour two hours three hours you pray spiritually here and there they start calling you for little counseling and say i'm making progress believe me if those are the indices you are using for progress you know why i'm saying this a time will come your life will become clear that you are not growing and you have to find ways of explaining to people first and foremost why you are not growing to grow spiritually is not the ability to sing spiritual songs alone that's important that you stand on stage and raise a song a popular song that we know in the body of christ or writing songs no it's not a sign that you're spiritual your degree of alignment to patterns 
Look at me, brothers and sisters. It is on the strength of that alignment you can look at people and stretch your hands and say, my God, bless you. And that encounter will produce more results to them than long grammar of nonsense that cannot be proved. Everybody say, I want results in my life. Please say it, I want results in my life. This is why, regardless of how spiritual we think we are, the people in our environment, subconsciously, they are not impressed and they are not convinced because it is barren of the ability to deliver. If your life is producing results, I assure you, your praying in tongues will not interrupt anybody. Nobody will say, yeah, stop shouting, Jare, it's too much. No, they are shouting because they are comparing that shout for three hours every day at the back of their window. Eight o'clock you are at it. Is it wrong? No. But that you are believing that just that in itself, on its own, please believe me. You see, Ba, I may not I may not claim to understand certain aspects in the kingdom but brothers and sisters when it comes to the presence of God and the operation of the kingdom I know what I'm saying there is a way a man walks with God that God will make your life a wonder there is a way a man thinks he is walking with God and at the end it looks like God is a wicked God I counsel people all the time. After years of spiritual activities, they return back with frustration. And they say, Apostle, I can't understand. I'm the prayer leader in my group. I love God. Every time we organize crusades, maybe in a, a place, our village at the end of the year, I can't understand. Why is God this unfair to me? Is this, is this how my life will be? I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. Listen, brothers and sisters, hear me and believe me when I tell you God is a good God something about our not understanding his ways is responsible the inability to understand the patterns of God and you see that's why many pastors have to be careful a whole territory can be disaligned because of an ideology that comes from a pastor especially here in the north because we are very religious people we are sincere people who are religious so a pastor comes on stage and for 10 years, he's teaching people something that is an error with such authority and audacity. They give birth to their children and their grandchildren and they say, this is the way. And when the child is saying, daddy, I think he's, they say, I will, I will slap you. It's been this way. Have you gotten results through it? Don't question God. It's only God that knows what he's doing. Let's just keep on. No, no, no. Everybody shout, no way. There is a way. Growing up, I saw many things. Well-meaning people who said all kinds of things about God. This is how we mock ourselves. Lion of the tribe of Judah. Everybody clap for Jesus. They clap, say, no, 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 this is not for my Jesus. And God is saying, do you really know me? All these things you are doing. Look how many frustrated people in the body of Christ. Look how many people are sick in the body of Christ. As if divine healing is a lie. That's why when you come and you are preaching and say there is a possibility in God to bring you healing, they are just watching you. It's when they hear somebody just shout, ah, 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 under the anointing, everybody says, ah, there's power in this place, so let's pay attention to what this person is saying. It's terrible. Look at what is happening to our families. Brothers and sisters, are you not concerned that our spirituality is not matching up with the faithfulness of God and the goodness of God as claimed by him himself. I tell you where the problem is. It's uncomfortably true, but we must admit it. Our inability to understand his patterns. 
God is a loving God, but He's not an emotional God. If He were an emotional God, the cry of many people would bring them out of hell. I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. Yes, I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. Oh. I have watched the lives of people, even in Koinonia here, I've watched the lives of people when they came for Koinonia with their beliefs, with their understandings about God, and they chose to receive the word of God foolishly, childlikely, and watch what has happened in their lives. Hallelujah. Patterns. Let's go to three great errors. I don't want to just dwell here, but I mean, I can stay here all night and challenge you. I took a study towards the end of last year on God's generals afresh. I've studied them so many times. So many times. But I took, I took another study recently and it was as though i had never studied them i remember crying almost for two three hours in the night and say lord what nonsense is this how come we lost touch with spiritual reality no symbol to charge the atmosphere for them no worship song as we know dancing around but these people came with sincerity and they activated possibilities in the lives of people those guys had results hundred people could come sick and up to 95 can live healed verified not this our thing that we're not even sure whether we're healed very sure that they are healed and the lord reiterated it to me again son I will not bend to your pattern. It was when the prodigal son got up and said, I will arise. The father wanted him, but the father would not just get up and roam around. The son said, Ah, ah. He thought to himself, I have disaligned out of pattern. When I was under the authority there, I lacked nothing. I wanted self sufficiency. It drove me out into lack. Now I'm eating with pigs. Question. Did his eating with pigs reduce the wealth of his father? Did any demon advise him? No. He said, I will arise. Let me tell you, some things are not demonic. It is within your power to be angry and say it must stop from today. I will arise and go to my father and say father i have sinned against you and against heaven i'm not even worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants and the bible says afar off while he was yet coming the father saw him and ran to him and ran to him i am passionate about seeking to understand the patterns of god our generation is not in ignorance Technology has opened us up to a vast array of possibilities. I watch believers now, and I'm telling you with all sincerity, the way many people are seeking God is not how I sought God. I sought God seriously. You don't even see anybody say, okay, let me get a concordance. They don't need it. I remember times when we'll sit down, we'll be asking questions. Ah, Jesus went to hell and preached a message. First Peter said so, and we are very fine right now. Believers don't say they sit down, gist and talk nonsense. Then when it's time for prayer, everybody say, Let's pray. Begin to pray. Everybody begin to move around. And we move around as if we are making a fool out of ourselves. Listen, let me talk to you. I have a responsibility to teach you truth. If I did not have the results in my life, you will say I'm deceiving you. Are we together now? Many people call upon God and it looks like He cannot answer. And then we keep creating theologies to explain this. Brothers and sisters, He can be hard. There is a disalignment. We need to return. So pastor said, God is not a God of crowd. He's a God of what then? 
God so loved the world, not God so loved Israel. God is not a God of crowd. I desire that no man perish. Prosperity is not the most important thing. All that is needed in your life, you don't need any anointing. Don't no nothing. No, no, the most important thing. If you have Jesus, you have everything. It looks like a very nice message. Believe it and see what it will do to you. It will destroy your life. That's what has happened. Let me tell you. Do you know any spiritual message can make you feel guilty? And so, it is out of guilt you will believe it. People just say, I hope you know there's nothing in this life. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And you just feel guilty and say, ah, that book of financial intelligence I bought. Let me just throw it because the way this guy is talking. Three errors. Let me talk about it. Error number one that has ravaged the body of Christ is the error of apostasy. Please write it down. Apostasy. Open up your spirit now. The Lord will bless you. Apostasy. What is apostasy? A departure from the known patterns of God. A departure, a derailing from the principles of God. The name is apostasy. Two scriptures very quickly. First Timothy, please, chapter 4, verse 1. First Timothy 4, verse 1. Apostasy. The first error in the body of Christ is that we have a people who are hell-bent on teaching nonsense and rubbish without finding out if what they are communicating is in line with God's pattern. It says, but the Holy Spirit, listen, distinctively and expressly declares that what will happen in the latter times some will turn away not backslide turn away completely from the faith it says giving attention to what deluding and seducing spirit and doctrines that demons teach who teaches it demons. there are doctrines in the body of christ that are doctrines of demons and when i say doctrines of demons don't just think the modern church ancient and modern all there are doctrines of demons that are older than us they subtly came they look spiritual satan always uses it is written apostasy a deviation from the truth listen please look up the first operation of demons in the life of a man is deception to cause a man to err to manipulate truth see deception does not have to be a lie a manipulated truth is also deception i can take truth out of his context and preach you see i've shared with us again and again that this bible is a prophetic book please listen to me brothers and sisters the bible is a prophetic book you can make it preach anything you want to hear there are native doctors that when you enter their shrine, you see Bible. Does that mean they are of God? You know it's a native doctor. But you enter, you can see all other religious books. And then he adds the Bible. He can even say, let's, before I even pray, before we cut this chicken, turn to Psalm, Psalm 5. Now you are reading, listen, you are reading the Bible. I say, ah, Psalm 5, this guy, this guy is making sense. Ah, I'm, I did, he say, ah, yeah, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm a traditionalist, but my own is different apostasy a deviation from truth there are people who have prophesied things to people that did not come from god they had something but it was not the spirit of god and they misled people every manifestation of prophecy that is not in sync with the patterns of god is witchcraft whether the operator of it is aware or not the operator may be innocent but it does not justify the operation are we together now? How many marriages have broken in the church? Because somebody got up and said, Ah, um, I don't know what is, I'm seeing. Martha, leave your husband because as I'm looking at you now, I'm seeing that um, there is a spirit. And they we can't even tell you the name of the spirit. The name of the spirit is A and B and C. 
pastors have left wives people are beating people parents have disowned children they have called innocent people mommy water if somebody who is in his right senses was born he has birth certificate from the hospital you now say the person came all the way from the river and all sorts of things now listen i'm not laughing i'm serious because i'm going to balance it there are many people who have carried the illusion right now they walk around saying i'm a witch he said who told you he said a hey, man of god that's why i came for miracle service they said i am a witch the man of God has never paid attention to find out what the Bible calls a witch. What is the condition from scripture to be called a witch or a wizard? Are we together now? And this has misled people. How about looking at a lady and vowing that you are going to marry a guy. His name is Benga. He likes keeping Malu. He will sit down by your left. If you don't marry this guy, your life is finished. And for 10 years, that lady is roaming around Nigeria looking for Wenga. Moving all around. We've discussed this under challenging discussions on late marriage. There is a balance to it because there are times that it is true. See, when truth, notice, when truth is manipulated, it becomes witchcraft. Apostasy. So many people have been confused today because of wrong teachings. Let me tell you other wrong teachings so you don't think that maybe I'm challenging people. That rubbish, demonic teaching that came from the pit of hell, please look up, came from the pit of hell that the anointing is not important. The most important thing is that Jesus is Lord of your life and you are heaven bound. That's a doctrine of demons. It's popular. It's taught by conservatives, but it's still demonic. Money is the root of all evil. Doctrines of demons. It came from the pit of hell. By sincere people, well-meaning. Don't confuse. I'm not saying those who brought it are demonic. It is devilish and it is terrible. Because men have absorbed it and it has produced nonsense in their lives. Other doctrines. Prayer is not important. You hear people say that kind of thing. Prayer is not important. They even laugh and mock and everything. And you see some people pray, bah, 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 and the congregation is laughing. And demons are saying, We like, we like this congregation. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Another doctrine of demon. Once demons, once you are praying and you don't have any business with the word, just pray. It's still the same thing. Are we together now? There are all kinds of episodes of lies sugar-coated with a little truth here and there that is deceiving and misleading the body of Christ. Apostasy, a deviation from the truth. Men of God have advised themselves on different ways to raise money and run church projects. Some of these ways of raising money, I, I say, you know that I love the body of Christ, but I must say it. We think it's nice. We think it's marketable. But some of these things were advices that were given by business people who received their inspiration on the seat of yoga. It was under strong transcendental meditations. They received some of this formula. And then we watched their videos on YouTube and say, wow, so this is how you raise money in the church. And then you now come and we apply all kinds of things. Now, the man may be genuinely anointed, but there is a mix, an aberration. It's called apostasy. A deviation from the truth. Some of us right now, you have believed something that is not of God. And that's what has authorized Satan. Regardless of your prayer, he still finds expression in your life. There are people who believe you can have 10 girlfriends. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is marry one. They even tell themselves, it looks nice. And they say, man of God, I have like 10 guys. The last guy just came two weeks ago. Just, can you help me? Which one do you think will be a nice guy? Because a doctrine was marketed to you. Are we together? Another, the latest of the dangerous apostasies that are coming is an imbalance of the concept of fatherhood and mentorship that is bringing, is making men in the body of Christ demigods. Are we together now? 
usurping authority, not just spiritual guidance, but literally holding the keys of the lives and destinies of other people. The disadvantage being a cause or a threat and all sorts of things. There is a place for that. But I've always frowned at such imbalances that have destroyed the body of Christ. So we have offshoots of these kinds of things. People who kneel down and hands up in church. Churches where they flog people. Oh, you are not aware of it. It has happened to some of you. That's why you are quiet. You are just looking. Because it has happened. Listen, I don't say this in a cynical way. I came with my heart to pour it out. This apostasy. Jesus prayed a prayer. He said that they may be one. They will cut away from all these things and stand in a point of strength. Doctrines of devils. Right now there are all kinds of strange demonic ministerial associations. Are we together now? If you want to rise, you have to come into, it's almost like a cabal, like a cult. You never rise until you subscribe to certain occultic things. And at extreme levels, at least it's not strange in the body of Christ, we know that there are all kinds of occultic societies. How many men of God have been caught with drugs at airports? Customs grounded them. Right? Do you think the man of God started selling drugs like that? He started innocently. The first day he went on TV, he paid almost one million. He said, ah, there must be another way of raising money. And somebody said, continue going. We, we are telling you this thing. We know how it works. And say, together with your preaching, you buy the shoe that has uh, whatever. You put cocaine. If you ship that one successfully, they transfer the money to your account. Who will know? After all, it's just your spirit that is safe. Your, 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 your body, your spirit is going to heaven. Your body will be transformed. All kinds of theology. Apostasy. It may not concern you now, but if you don't pay attention to it, you'll be very surprised. A man of God once said, and I've shared it here, how that he went to minister for one of his spiritual sons. And after he finished the ministration, he, he saw the crowd. Within a year, there were well over 4,000 people. And he looked at him, he said, ah, in this place, 4,000. He laughed and said, Daddy, you think your oil, what, what you are releasing upon us? And he said, no. He told him, he said, go out. He sat down with his wife. He said, my daughter, talk to me. And she said, I will tell you the truth, sir. He said, they went to somebody, true story, a herbalist who gave them a mic. You know, most men of God, we have our mics. They gave him a mic. But that mic, they slaughtered a baby like these are little ones. They slaughtered a baby with the physical blood. They did some enchantments and gave the mic. If you are passing that vicinity and your spirit is not at a particular frequency, if you hear that sound, you must meander to that church and go and sit down quietly. Are altar calls being done in that church? You won't believe it. <laughs> are miracles happening in that church? You won't believe it. You don't use altar calls and miracles just as a sign that things are okay the man may be sincere but he was desperate for power to an extent that you kill somebody's child one of the ladies here she's even here she sent me a text day before when were we talking about it yesterday or day before yesterday somebody came to steal a baby he stole the baby as he was going out with the baby the mother caught him and he dropped the baby and ran away the lady sent me a text it happened in zaria here Do you know what people do for this anointing? Do you know what people do for power? Do you know what people do for jeep? Apostasy. And people compare themselves with themselves. I shared with you a story years ago about a man of God who had a particular oil that was given to him. You rub it when you enter the meeting, the dramatic manifestations of the spirit. And one day, you know, they were doing an early morning service. True story. And he's like assistant like this. Um, he didn't bath, you know, because he had to wake up in the morning, run to church, so maybe he just wash his face. And he, the man sent him to go and pick something in his room. And when he went, he saw the oil, you know, anointing oil. Just I thank God, let me just rub this thing fast so that at least I can look nice. I can bath after the service. And the guy rubbed the oil. 
when that guy stepped into the church i mean there were all kinds of somersaults and the jew looked at him and called him he said what did you use he said, I, I, I saw oil around your this thing and i rubbed one. he said you rubbed that oil may the lord punish me as i stand before you and i'm lying or just giving you a story apostasy those who have completely deviated they are not of god or those who are of god but their doctrines are not of god a man can be of god but his doctrine is of another spirit are we together now it's still apostasy so there are those who as people are not are not um, of god there are not many of these kinds let's be honest in nigeria popular to the stories people say everybody they are fake men of god everywhere it's, it's not true there are very few people very few and they are not even popular who are fake but a man can be of god but his doctrine there was a doctrine in the bible called the doctrine of balaam question was balaam a false prophet so what why, why was his doctrine being used to admonish the church there was a doctrine called the doctrine of the nicolaitans which i hate now the bible tells us about the doctrines of demons praise the lord apostasy wrong personalities bringing doctrines from the pit of hell specifically to mislead the body of christ or genuine personalities but not thorough spiritually and then bringing wrong doctrines and it ministering it sincerely but is destroying the, the body of christ these two groups form the group that communicate apostasy a man can be genuine a man can be true but his doctrine may not be of god error number two in the body of christ that will stop the body of christ from coming into a place of unity until we work on it is the fear of confronting apostasy we have a group of people a group of individuals and a group of men of god who are less as fair and do not care about the general growth of the body for as long as their individual ministry is doing well let the body of christ go places look up please these are the ones that do not have the courage to be controversial these are the ones that do not have the courage to address a lot of things please look up they are the kind of people who can see somebody like sam being corrupted in his worship ministry and he's going down and they say well this is not my music director so i don't care they have the fear they hate being controversial they are the kind of men of God who always want a good name. They are the kinds of individuals. They, they don't want to be associated with any stain. No, 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 no. Let it not be. Those kinds of people, because of that fear of walking in spiritual things and the fear of being spiritual, have refused the power of God from finding expression. They are the type who don't want anybody to fall down in the church. No, no, no. no. We, don't, we don't want that kind of thing. Somebody starts prophesying, they go and throw him outside. I say, please keep him somewhere close to the toilet, lock him there. We don't want any disturbance. That fear of being controversial. Are we together now? The second error that will stop the body of Christ. When you want to confront certain things, people say, What's your business? Just leave them. Let them do their thing. Shabi, you are going to heaven. But how many other people are going to hell because of it? Are we together now? Listen. Let me show you two scriptures that will bless you very quickly. Mm. Titus chapter 1 verse 10 to 13. This, this scripture is very instructive. Titus 1 verse 10 to 13. Let me tell you why many of the people, the believers and ministers in this group fear. Because of their, they are so conscious of their ego, their ministry and their reputation. There are so many men of God in Nigeria over conscious of their reputation to an extent that they would rather the body of christ die than they stand strong to say no 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 but this requires adjustment 
they can gossip about it in the secret they can gather people together and castigate men in the secret they can say all kinds of things in the secret but none of them have the courage they are the type that will see a sister and say do you know that this sister is sleeping with every brother in this fellowship and you are wondering you are her pastor what is wrong with calling her and say sister i love you they would never say it because they are ashamed of their controversy. They are the type that they say, ah, oh, promise is in, in the police station. They say, please, we have many members. This is just one of them. Let the police handle their work there. Because he said, um, if his pastor comes, he can talk to him and say, please, I'm not a pastor of criminals. You see that? Overly conscious of their reputation. Let me tell you something. And I stand before the Lord of heaven to tell you this. If you have scars... I will get on my knees and I will clean that scars with you. Never will we leave our wounded soldiers simply because of reputation. I don't have one. I've been controversial from day one. There are husbands who will not identify with their wives. Two years, she is not giving birth. And somebody looks at her and starts singing a song. Why do we have two men in this place instead of a man and a wife? And the man starts distancing himself. The fear. Listen, if you want the body of Christ to become one, you must drop aside your ministry, your ego. Are we together now? Because you love the body. That's what Jesus did. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took on my guilt and shame When you died and rose again Now today you reign In heaven and now exalted I really want to worship you my Lord You are from my heart and I am yours Forever and ever I will love you you are the only one who died for me Gave your life to set me free So I lift my hands to you In adoration Listen By the grace of God There is nobody close to me Who I will see derailing And I will be ashamed to hold his hands We have stood by people in this place with all kinds of situations i'm not my idea of being a man of god is not gathering that's why men of god do not have spiritual daughters and sons who are blind lame those ones are not sons the one who is a ceo the lady who is drop dead beautiful my daughter the one who is, is, is god god is helping them all kinds of things she's sick they don't have money is depending on you that one is a nuisance the fear of being controversial the fear of confronting apostasy they sit down in a place they are the people who can be outside and somebody is making derogatory statements against a man of god because of a misconception and they have the opportunity to say ah, my brother whatever it is that happens you don't address this they keep quiet and the person who is talking is saying i, I think you are aware you know that a jimmy is not serious with god the guy will be nodding but he's supposed to be a jimmy's member but he's nodding because of the fear of identifying. We have people in the body of Christ like that. Are we together now? They are ashamed of identifying with Christ. They are the type who will never put a gospel ringtone. They are the type who can never wear a shirt Jesus saves. Ah, they are falling their hands. They are the types who can never say bless. They will say bless you when they come for koinonia. But you can do it your life. fear of my ego fear of my ego fear of my reputation when they brought the woman caught in adultery to Jesus that was what they thought he had the fear they thought he loved his ministry so much that Jesus would have nothing to do with a prostitute and they dropped her before him and said you claim to be holy this lady she's been caught in adultery what do you recommend and Jesus looked and he says you see all of you whoever does not have sin among you cast the first stone and she was shocked 
when he went to the Samaritan woman, there was a time Jesus sat with prostitutes. He was not preaching. They were eating. And people said, this guy is a liar. When Mary Magdalene broke the alabaster box and was rubbing her hair on Jesus' feet, people said, that's it. We've had enough of this. This guy is, is no, you are not straight. No way. You know Mary Magdalene somewhere. This is not the first time this is happening. And watch this. Jesus never had any pressure to defend himself. I know what many of us would do. You go and say, look, I want you to know that I just looked at her and it's not like that. I know she's somebody's wife now. What is the whole thing? Can't... Fear. Fear of evangelism. A guy loves you, but he's not sure you are a Christian. And God says, preach to him. And you say, ah, after this guy has written me all kinds of letters, I will lie now and start talking to him about Jesus and fold my hand and scatter everything and say I'm a church girl. The fear of being controversial. Jesus said, whoever is ashamed of me, hear me before men, whoever is ashamed of me before men. You look at a man of God, there is nothing around his life that lets you know he's a man of God. Hallelujah. People can come to your house and say, sorry, oh, bros, that I, I just held one bottle of Buddha. Let me just drink it very fast. I mean, I said, no, no problem. Just sit down and relax. No opportunity to preach and talk to them about Jesus. It's not an issue. And they say, won't you take two? And then you just take one cup two and say, Lord, you know that it's just when in Rome, behave like the Romans do. This group of people are afraid of confronting truth. Listen, there are many pastors in many churches who have seen the truth, but they cannot speak. Are we together now? There are many pastors who know that it's in being filled with the Holy Spirit that you will step to the next level. They watch people go to hell and remain powerless, and they quickly come. That was what happened to a man called Nicodemus, John chapter 3. He had to come to Jesus by night. He was part of those who were shouting at Jesus in the day. You are this and that and that and that, but in his heart. So he came by night and this is what he said. He said, Rabbi, we know you are a man sent from God. For no man, forget all that shout we are shouting in the day. We know the truth. Listen, how many people will insult koinonia, abuse koinonia in the day, and carry the miracle messages and just sneak and lay their hands where the growth is and say, God, whatever it is, let, just let, let me. There are many people I know who may not publicly stand to endorse what we represent, but they have come to me in secret. And say, man of God, pray for us. Sorry, you know that it's just because of our environment. The courage to be controversial. Those are the kinds of people who will blaze the revival. How many people can pray in tongues if their loved ones are around? The courage to be controversial. Titus 1. For there are many disorderly and unruly men who are idle, vain, empty and misleading talkers. Listen. And self-deceivers and deceivers of others. Listen. He said this is true. Especially of those of the circumcision party who have all of that. Verse 11. Listen. He said their mouths must not be stopped. For they are mentally distressing and subverting whole families by teaching what they ought not to teach. For the purpose of getting base advantage and disreputable gain just stop there there are people like this and he's saying you are watching them he said they should not be allowed to do these things not by writing all kinds of nonsense propaganda but where god gives you an opportunity you can talk to them isaiah 5 verse 20 let's hurry up isaiah 5 verse 20 fear of confronting apostasy they will not speak so you don't know where they are standing because if they speak it may cost them money it may cost them support there are pastors who will never teach because they know the day they teach some truths members will leave and they will rather 
leave the members and teach error. It's a dangerous thing, brothers and sisters. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. You know those who do that? They are the ones who come and say, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. You preach, I mean, it was powerful. Hey, Jimmy, I can't, I can't believe what you did. And they go back and say, what that guy is teaching? Say a lie. They do not have the courage. Are we together now? Because of money, because of fame. There are men of God who are blossoming on TV stations because they were given conditions not to preach certain things, not to say certain things. And they said, that's all right. That's all right. And it's growing. Right now, the media is trying to strangle God out. You are not allowed to say God again. Now there are technologies that mute those parts. You watch it in films. People are saying, my God and my, and you don't hear anything. They've removed it away, but they can't allow any other curse word to be free because their subliminal message is programming the mind of a generation to be depraved and to run away from God. How many businessmen in Nigeria can go to their business circles and stand and say, look, we are business people, but this is my pastor. I am a Christian. I love the Lord. Ah, I say, you don't do that. If you do that, that's equivalent to one year's wages in jeopardy. And so they don't mind behaving that they are not of Christ. They don't care. You are in a board meeting and people are saying, this is what we are supposed to give the workers, but we are going to chop this one. Just don't mind them, all these poor people. And you are there, you just laugh. When it backfires, you say, I didn't say anything. But you watched it, you would have enjoyed it if it came. The Bible says, they are the ones who call who evil. Is there any problem? No, 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 not at all. It's all right. The fear of being controversial. That's what happens in Nigeria. That's why we are suffering and having all the kinds of things we are having. Because there are men whose loyalty cannot be defined. There's a man of God I love so much. Many of you know him. Pastor Tony Bakari. I love him very well because, not necessarily because I believe in all of his ideologies. I love him because he's a man who stands. I love people who you can define what they represent. Let me tell you, never be friends to somebody who is friends to everybody. He's a dangerous person. They cannot define their stand. You don't know what camp they are in. Today it looks like they are here. Tomorrow it looks like they are here. They can become anything as occasion serves them. They are dangerous people. Very dangerous people. Are we together now? There are so many people like that. There are people who come to church. They are nice in church. But you can, if you organize one party, they won't come in the, in the evening. When the light has gone down, they'll just roll and say, I just came around. Before you do it, they start nodding to the music. Last scripture. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 18 and 19. The second category of people who are causing error in the body of Christ. Those who fear confronting any deviation from the patterns of God. Because of what it will cost them. Ezekiel 3 verse 18 and 19. Listen. If you say to the wicked. If I say to the wicked. You shall surely die. And you do not give him warning. Are you hearing now? Or speak to warn the wicked to turn from his wicked way. To save his life. He said the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require from your hand. Next verse. Yet if you warn the wicked man. And he turn not from his wickedness. Nor from his wicked way. He shall die in his iniquity. But you have delivered yourself. There are many men of God who are holding in their hands people's reasons for going to hellfire. And I assure you, they will answer God. The rich man is unfaithful to his wife. You know it. The rich man is into drugs. You know it. 
he carried 100 million from the drug money and brought it to your church and because you need the money you cannot sit down to say sir please hold your money i'm more interested in your soul out of that one million you have already calculated two jeeps 10 10 million that's 20 tight 10 million instruments speakers i'll buy another rav4 for my wife you have calculated it god is watching the fear of being controversial you can stand with one billion naira i will tell you the truth and tell you this is it this is not it number three is god speaking to us ready for number three the third reason or the third error is exaggerated confrontation of error hmm. pay attention to what i'm about to teach exaggerated confrontation of error This is the third kind of error. So the first is apostasy. The second is the error of silence and indifference. The third is the error of imbalance. Imbalance, misjudgment. This is where I will dwell and then we will pray. The third category of people, those who are cynical, wicked by default, who pride themselves at exposing and revealing the downfall of people, in a bid to prove that they are correcting they find pleasure in revealing the flaws of the body of christ they are the type who will hold on to certain things in a person or in a ministry and stop people from receiving from god listen there are many men of god today who preach against receiving the baptism of the holy spirit ask them why they will say i went for a meeting and I saw a man of God teaching people how to pray in tongues. Because of that singular mistake, they build a doctrine around it and use it as the basis for attacking anything that will become a blessing. Are we together? Because they had a story that a man of God was sleeping with another man's wife. They just say, all young men, especially when all these ones that wear suit, no tie, be careful. You see that? They say, I remember an incident. They pick on that one and build a doctrine out of it. It's called exaggerated confrontation of error. It would have been good if it were kept within the ambience of its relevance. But by default, they had always been intimidated. Listen, this group of people are those who never do anything serious. They are the ones who look for justifications. When people are praying, three hours eight hours and they are not praying they are the ones who are intimidated the day somebody from the prayer group falls sick they are the ones to let you know those prayer people somebody has fallen sick it's not all about prayer and they say i've been telling you so they they look for situations to justify their failures and their inability for making a mark i watched a video this afternoon that touched me it was a um many of you know a tedx and all of that so i was watching i saw the name it says the power of shame and i said wow this is interesting let me and then i clicked on it to listen to it and it was monica Lewinsky. remember uh, some of you were hallelujah 1998 the saga between her and bill clinton right had a scandal and you won't believe it jimmy when i heard molly kalewinski talk for about 30 minutes i'm not an emotional person honestly especially when i'm under the anointing but i found myself fighting tears because popular to the stories they gave us popular to the way they lambasted that lady a 22 year old lady at that point you are the one who wants to sleep with our president and nobody heard her opinion they tore her into pieces and for about 10 or 20 years she could not come up in the open because of the shame and the degradation and when she was talking people were crying i said this reminds me of our world 
I can stand to preach and make a mistake in communicating something. What I wanted to say did not live to you the way it came. Those who sit in Koinonia are already used to me making that kind of error. Say they understand what I would have said. But somebody who has been looking for an occasion will say, come and listen to this. He will cut, he will even thank God for, I mean, he will cut, I say, just listen to this line. He said, Apostle Joshua Selman said, the primary assignment of the Holy Spirit is to kill you. Now, he didn't understand what I was saying. He said, can you see that? And you are going to that kind of church? <laughs> They are the type who will say, ah, miracles are stage managed. And then the day somebody comes and says, I, I went to this ministry, let me tell you the truth. Kai, what I saw, I didn't like it. They said, you see, but they are always looking for an occasion to validate their weaknesses and their intimidation. So every time they, it seems like they are correcting the body of Christ, they are not correcting the body of Christ. They are venting a philosophy that will give them a breathing space. The goal of their correcting men of God or connecting doctrines is not to create order. The goal is to excuse their limitations. Is God speaking to us? Their confrontation is from the standpoint of jealousy, from the standpoint of envy, bitter jealousy, the standpoint of envy, they use the truth to destroy. They use the truth to gratify the desires of the flesh. They are the type that will fight prosperity and will use one case study. Hallelujah. Right now, I'm sorry to say it and I say it with every sense of apology. I've heard of men of God who castigate ministers and talk about people maybe selling communion table. You know, there are churches that sell communion table, wristband, water, etc., etc. Now, there is an exaggeration to those things. But you do not throw the baby and the bad water. Thank God I'm not selling anything to you. But I've seen a lot of ministers, even communion, they criticize ministries and say people are selling blood. They are selling this. Ah, forget this. They are fathers of faith. What sort of nonsense is that? The people do not understand the mysteries. I've seen people insult God's servant Bishop Oye, David Foyedeko because of feet washing. You may not practice it. You may have reservations about that. But learn to respect people's dimensions and revelations. And even where you are addressing such issues for corrective purpose, it must come from a heart of love. Not from a heart of bitter jealousy. There is a way I can talk about a man of God. You will know I have a personal vendetta. This is not about addressing an issue. This is a preconceived anger in me that has been seeking for a platform to find expression. Hear me. If you belong to that group, it must change tonight. Are we together? A lady who is feeling bad about herself, has a very bad self-image and may not work on it. And all of a sudden, she may see a pretty lady and then see the lady dressed very nude and say, look at, look at what this, look at all your Christian girls. The way she's, it's true that that lady is nude, but her addressing it is not because the lady is nude. She is angry at the beauty of the lady and the reaction it is creating to her awareness that she's not good enough. So she's using hammer to kill a fly. She keeps talking about it. I said, something pained me today. What is it? See the way this Christian girl's dress. The, what they are trying to address is imbalance. Here men of God talk about miracles. They say, do you know that people stage manage miracles? There are people who do this. Yes. We know that there are people who do this, but are there people who teach the truth? Are there people who teach the truth? Every young man that is prosperous, oh, they are drug barons, they are this, this, they are 419, they are whatever. Don't mind them. How can a young man be so rich? Don't worry. I mean, life has time. Your limitation, what you believe, you transfer it to a congregation and keep people poor and keep people fighting everybody. Listen to me. Some of you subconsciously are partnering with the devil to destroy the body of Christ. I told you here, you never hear me open, open my mouth and talk about a man of God to condemn him. If I mention the name of a man of God, it's to honor him for something. I challenge wrong doctrines. I would challenge things that I feel need to be corrected. Are we together?
but I will never tear down another man's ministry because I'm trying to show you hear me say it again that all koinonia is doing is a contribution to the advancement of the kingdom it will be fallacy for you to believe koinonia is the only ministry that is making impact thank God for the wonderful things he's doing through us but I am aware you are aware that all around the world there are men and women of God who love God with all their heart some of us will never receive blessings from somebody from a Catholic church because of your cynicism oh Holy Mary they do this and that and that and that and God brings somebody to your life who can bless you but that stigma because of the exaggerated confrontation of what you may consider to be imbalance you have closed your heart somebody from another denomination cooks food for you you say god forbid me i can't eat this what has that got to do with the food there are pastors who have propagated all kinds of messages once it is not your member with your church having your wristband or having the pastors or, or all kinds of things you fight everybody let me tell you it is a lie from the pit of hell don't you let no man give you an impression like him or his ministry are the ultimate custodians of the activities of the spirit is in itself is an error jesus said i pray that they may be one that's why you don't find anybody get up here and come and say oh the god of koinonia i don't have a problem with it honestly but i personally for organizational purposes no we give the glory to god and it stops there are we together three great errors the error of apostasy the error of indifference is more deceptive than apostasy because nobody knows where you stand they don't know whether you speak in tongues or not they are not sure they don't know whether you believe in miracles or not please look at me the second category they are the type who can go to a harbor list and still come to a man of God they don't care are we together now yeah they are the types who who will run and take drugs in the secret swallow Panadol swallow Fancida and come up and say look in the last 10 years God is my witness even a, even I don't even know how Panadol what was even the name as if they have forgotten Panadol how old are you you see the second category the day now they are sick and they have something like a growth that is obvious they travel and don't come to church the lord asked me to preach this because it's very important it's a message to us and it's a message to the body of christ listen galatians chapter 6 verse 1 two scriptures and then i tie it up and we'll pray galatians 6 verse 1 Brethren, if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort, listen, he's teaching you how to confront error. There is a way to confront error. There is a way to confront sin. There is a way to confront mistakes. Are we together? There is a way to bring confrontation such that it ends up bringing healing and addition and multiplication to the body. He says, brethren, if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort, he say you who are spiritual, who are responsive, listen, to and controlled by the spirit, should set him right and restore and reinstate him, listen, without what? Any sense of superiority. And with all gentleness. Then he puts a disclaimer. Keeping an attentive eye on yourself. See that? Less you should be tempted to. Okay, the guy came to you and said, honestly, I love God, but last week, I found myself going to a herbalist place to collect a charm. I say, ah! Go and tell apostle. <laughs> it's not even me that will say this thing, but you see that? And before you know it, everybody in Zaria knows that promise when to collect a charm. You destroy his life. You destroy his ministry. And you say, I've always known. It's not today. There was a day the Holy Spirit was revealing to me, Holy Spirit, I'm sorry for refusing to hear you. We, we pride ourselves. Listen, how many wounded soldiers, I'm rounding up, 
in the body of Christ. Do you know the greatest place where believers die is the church? I'm not justifying that people live lawless and just do all kinds of nonsense. Let a lady get pregnant in church and you hear what happens. Am I, am I endorsing it? No. Let a lady get pregnant. It's a believer who will come to you and say, have you heard? Say, you mean you are here? Kai, you have eyes you can't see. Are we together now? A brother goes to ask a sister and she says, no, no, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm already engaged to somebody. Before you know it, this brother says, I'm happy. It's good for them. Blah, blah, blah. You carry and ship trouble. It is only in the church where people destroy their wounded soldiers with joy. May that never happen in Koinonia. In the name of Jesus Christ. We have managed all kinds of cases in this ministry. All kinds. And God is my witness. I love the people with all my heart and with all passion. There are people who have come to meet me with charms. This is what we're doing. There are ladies who have gone to Zaria City and come to say, I don't say, ah, no, no, no. With all the teaching, I'm, no, 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 no. You don't do that. When a brother is caught or a sister, you restore one. Are we together now? If a man of God comes to how many men of God have come to me? Man of God, I'm preaching, but I'm caught up in masturbation or pornography. I don't look and I say, you, of all people, there's no such thing as that. Let me tell you, there is no man who cannot fall. We are all products of God's mercy. I have learned this. I know that if any man is standing, he's only standing because of God's grace. Grace, your grace. Lord, I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Listen, that's how we treat people all around. You see a fellow believer belonging to a particular church, you stand and laugh at them. Ah, see this lady tying her hair in a certain way. See this one cat walking, and there are people who see certain ladies. See, the ladies just wearing her trousers. I say, Look at them. These are all the prostitute ladies moving all around. What is it's wrong? It's wrong. That love is what we do not have. That's why we don't see the power of God. We pray, we fast, but we have no love. He said, There remain these three faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of all is love. There is no ministry I cannot preach in. There is no man of God I cannot talk to. No matter, I don't care who. I love the body of Christ. And I love the body of Christ passionately. Are we together now? Very important. There are books many of us would have read that would have blessed us. But because it was written by authors, our pastors have condemned. The Holy Spirit is nudging you. Read this book. There is lawlessness in your church. Read Papa Kumui's book, for instance. Maybe he wrote a book on holiness. And God is saying, read it. You need it. But I say, no, 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 no. The church I come from, we have all of this and you lose out. There was a time during my retreat, for one whole day, the Holy Spirit, well, it started in the night, but the Holy Spirit told me to listen to Papa Kumui's messages. Man, that thing flogged me from head to toe. Just the greeting. It wasn't even what he was addressing. There was a spirit that oozed out of him that I, I don't know how many things I repented from, from that night in morning. And it was good for me. See, brothers and sisters, you must love the body of Christ. We are all going to the same heaven. There is none that will be created for only you. I love the body of Christ. I never discriminate people. I can't see a lady now and say, oh, you are this, you are this. No. See, if you are wounded and there's something wrong in your life, if you are looking for somebody to start you, you have found one. Me, Joshua Selman. I'm not afraid of being controversial. I'm not one of those cowards. One of our ladies years ago was pregnant out of wedlock. You remember her? 
this thing ruined the lake. It was Christians. I'm not justifying it. Brothers and sisters, how believers stab themselves. They messed up this lady's life. Almost destroyed her life. In an attempt to show that holiness pays. Yes, it does. But what do you do with a soldier who is wounded? Rebels don't come to God. They run away. When a man comes to God, no matter how wounded he is, he's not a rebel. Are we together now? Jesus said, he who does not have any sin should cast the first stone. When you are pointing one hand at people, three fingers are pointing back at you. I remember that lady came, she found a home. That time we used to meet in, in the campus there. Do you know a time would come whenever we are preaching, her baby would just be silent. When we get up and we start praying, she would say her baby is kicking. She found love, found acceptance. I used to bless that lady with money every time. She was, because of the shame and the reproach that believers brought to her life, she said she wanted to defer. I said, you are not deferring. You must finish and I'm going to stand with you. I think a Jimmy is a witness and a few people here. I used to walk with that lady with her big stomach. I would walk with her in front of their hostel, Amina, and drop her there. Let anybody think what he wants to think. They say, the way this guy is being careful with this pregnancy, are you sure that whatever you want to think, think it? Are we together now? I will never forget. I, I was so passionate about her issue. The Lord revealed to me the day she would give birth. And I told her, I said, prepare. On a Wednesday, you are going to give birth. That morning, she called in the morning. I was so happy as if it was my child. As she was giving birth, I was already appearing in Shika happily. When she gave birth, I said, I want the child. Where is the child? Are you the father? That's not the issue. I want the child. I held that child. Listen, I prophesied to that child from the depth of my heart. People were looking at me. That child's destiny, parents can choose to mess up, but children don't choose to come. Give them a right to enjoy a blessed life. Are we together? I have stood by people here in police stations. Oh, so, so person is in police station and he said they should talk to you. Oh, this, he said you are his pastor. He said you are this. I said, what's his name? I said, yes, I know him. Oh, this person did A and B. I said, I'm coming and I will go there. I will appear there. Ah, ah. Sorry, sir. Are you not the person Koinonia? Yes, I'm the one. They are our wounded soldiers, but we will hold them to a place of victory. Well, I'm not a coward. No. Listen, I'm encouraging you. This night, practice that ministry. Some of you need to go back to somebody and say, look, I left you the day I found out that you were drinking, but I'm back to tell you I love you. I see the way you are struggling to listen to Koinonia messages. I see how sincerely you have a passion to get back. I'm here to help you. You do that, you will see the power of God in your life. I never, never have, never will condemn anybody. See, let me tell you, there is nobody God cannot change. Don't you sit down and say, me, I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't do this. Just keep quiet and say, Lord, I give you all the praise. During our counseling session, you see Muslims come people come Muslims because they know that I love them and I'm friendly I don't squeeze my face as if as if I'm the person who did this and say why are you here are you not no 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 no. everybody Jesus healed in the Bible was not born again but he still healed them I love them I play with their children I'm happy I have blessed the lives of people who today who have no business nothing in return for me please I'm teaching you something that will bless you there are people who cannot come for koinonia right now because of scars in their lives. And some of us are the ones who are helping to keep that scars. There are roommates who would have won to Jesus Christ. There are fathers and mothers who have done all kinds of things. But we are the ones who destroy them. Exaggerated confrontation. I even hear that in many churches, it's even an, a thing of embarrassment. They come and embarrass the people publicly. Embarrass the parents. 
misquoting the scripture that says you should rebuke them publicly we don't even understand what god is saying whereas the person who is rebuking the guy for smoking has gold that hidden somewhere he turned it inside the cup and kept it in a fridge you would think he's zobo does zobo foam let's tell ourselves the truth and cry for the mercy of god let me tell you listen i have learned something by experience once you see somebody over talking about a little issue he's a victim of it he, that talk is to create a sense of justification believe what i'm telling you the day jesus christ will come you will be surprised to see those who are really close to him you will think it will be joshua selman with all my ministry regalia god will just go to somebody who you would have thought was an outcast because we who think we are great we are arrogant people and will not come to god but there are those who say lord in iniquity did my mother birth me from beginning i inherited it and i've worked in it have mercy upon me and god says these are the kinds of people who will find him every time i go to god i don't go with a sense of condemnation but brothers and sisters i go with a sense of gratitude ah because i know i know what the mercy of god has done in my life are we together the next time you turn and you see a lady pregnant don't start asking stupid questions you turn and see somebody ah he went for a party and they injured him and he's back to god answering altar call he said but bros now where did you go to that they hit you like this it's over learn to help people i'm not laughing three errors that are stopping the unity of the body i love people i love you whenever you see me rebuke you you know from the depth of your heart that it is out of love i can rebuke you but when you commit the offense i will be there i wrote a song years ago the bandage is larger than the wound i will sing it one day for you I wrote that song to help hurting people. I'm concluding. Jesus gives the story of a Samaritan woman, right? A, a, a good Samaritan. Somebody was beaten by armed robbers. Are we together? A religious person came and passed and looked at him, not wanting to be unclean, left. A pastor came and looked at him and saw it and said, No, 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 I'm holy and left but then another person came a samaritan and got down on his knees and cleaned him whose wounds have you cleaned see the true picture of fatherhood is the ability to rebuke and yet cover the ability to rebuke and yet guide to tell you no 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 gulda is gulda it's not the way of god however there is a grace that can help you i am willing to help you I will never forget years ago when a lady developed like a bipolar problem she was seeing things she was supposedly praying in tongues for two hours they took her to security office they called her pastor he kept giving all kinds of excuses i refused to come the lady i mean she would literally fight with anybody bah, 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 praying supposedly overnight like for two days non-stop i just somebody she doesn't even attend our meetings then somebody who used to attend the meeting called on me i said i'm coming i was at the security office i just got there and they said i should write statement i said for what I'm, allow me to find out what is going on first i will take any embarrassment if it is for you i will take any embarrassment if it's for the kingdom let me be controversial misunderstand me the most important thing is that no man will judge us on that day when we stand before him God will see let me tell you the day we stand before God you will be surprised to see the people who will enter heaven and you'll be surprised to see those who will be said depart from me ye workers of iniquity you will see somebody you have concluded upon who later when you died gave his life to Christ and God used him who would have said Saul will be the one to bless people who would have said so Listen, live your life with eternity in view. 
do not be afraid to stand for the kingdom do not be a man of values when people are bleeding be there we're rounding up god told me if we can address these three errors there will be no reason for criticism again there will be no reason for anything strange there are people who wait for men of god to fall that's why prayer department and the rest pray for i mean they are waiting they are waiting somebody who does not know anything about finances goes to write an article about a pastor and says somebody gave him money what is your business if you don't understand kingdom finances you don't get up and now begin to talk and run your mouth and say all kinds of rubbish oh the tv ministry he's doing he's doing it out of this and that and that let somebody just appear now and just put a baby and say exposed Joshua Selman has a three-year-old, this beautiful lady is his daughter. And he will say, you know, uh, my conscience, the same you, the same you who is looking at me right now, the same you who is receiving miracles, the same you who is a man of God with envelopes and kneeling down, they were the same people who said crucify him. Please reduce it to keys. Let's sing one song and close this night. There's a song in my spirit. Play, 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 Mike. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all will see Jesus, will sing. And shout the victory. I have a version. When we all get to heaven, what a day of surprises that will be. Because you will see people you never felt will make heaven. You see people who you look at them and think because they are controversial, they are not of God. You will see them stand at the gates of heaven. And you will watch the way the gates will be shut against many who stand with their self-righteousness killing the body of Christ. Rejoiner, when you read his book, The Final Quest, it was a revelation of the operation of the body of Christ. Please read the book if you can get it. I read it years ago and it blessed me. And when he was shown the vision of the body of Christ, he saw so many people climbing a ladder and he saw others pulling them down and they were christians who were pulling their soldiers he found out that whenever any believer had an issue many people came and were stabbing him with a knife and they were all christians may it never be through your life that somebody will miss heaven because something about an exaggerated i'm not teaching you to not confront error but it in itself is an error to move beyond certain things and destroy a man's ministry a prophet went to a church and saw by revelation that a man of God's wife was sleeping with somebody in the church what will a wise prophet do will you not come down after the meeting you call the woman and say mama please don't be offended this is what I saw I can pray with you I can help you he just carried his big mouth and ran it in the church and saying what I'm seeing is a surprise well, and that and that. who is by the name ABC people clap ah mama you got it right who is by the name so so person they clap they say two of you you know what you are doing and he just tore that ministry into two you think that's the will of God rise up let's pray Jesus prayed a prayer and said that they may be one three prayer points according to the teaching very quickly and we're done lift your hands to heaven and thank him for this word the word will bless you in the day you need it this word came from the lord for you and by extension for the body of christ there are people listening to this message right now and he's healing them literally literally healing them give him thanks say father thank you for your word every moment in your presence is a time of transformation every time 
in your presence is a time of change you have given me wisdom you have given me grace first prayer point and i like you to pray seriously i like you to pray and say lord every revelation in my life that is an error that is already leading me the way of apostasy reveal it to me and bring me back on track lift your voice and pray please pray make sure you are praying inside and all the overflows make sure you are praying everything i have held on to everything i have held on to capable of destroying me doctrines of demons doctrines of demons persuasions that look spiritual but are not consistent with the patterns of the kingdom open my eyes oh god open my eyes oh god so that i will not keep the body of christ in bondage doctrines that have kept the church poor doctrines that have kept the church conscious of demons and spirits as against the strength and the might of christ doctrines that have made the church powerless doctrines that have caused men to depend on the strength of the flesh as against the power of the cross lord take it away from my life bring me to the way everlasting hallelujah prayer point number two i like you to pray and say lord where i need to speak out for you i receive grace to not let my ego make me watch other sin in error go to hell when i can address it that 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 self-destructive attitude of keeping my ego and allowing somebody go to hell that state of indifference i don't want to be controversial so i rather allow people in their error than to stand and teach truth lift your voice and say help me help me help me give me grace and give me courage are you praying koinonia grace and courage grace and courage the bible says we all like sheep have turned astray every man has gone his own way grace 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 to draw people away from the gates of hell unashamedly regardless of the controversy that it will bring in your life regardless of how misunderstood you will be pray hallelujah before we take the third prayer point hold your hands together we're going to sing that song though we are many we are one body we are one body in Christ though we are many we are one body we are one body in Christ lift your voice and sing it one time I don't care whether you are Catholic, Anglican, Mountain of Fire, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, we may differ in different things, but it is very clear that the intention of the kingdom is that we may be one. Oh, we are many. We are one body. We are one body in Christ. For the last time now, lift your voice and sing. Though we are many, yes, we are one body. We are one body in Christ. Though we are many, we are one body. We are one body in Christ. 
I like you to pray and say, Lord, put such love for the body of Christ in me. Not love for koinonia. Love for the body of Christ. Every denomination, regardless of what I agree with or what I disagree with, every denomination, regardless of what I believe about their doctrines or not, is too small a reason too small a reason to fight too small a reason to tear down people pray lord i love your body every denomination regardless of their errors regardless of the areas of imperfections they may have made mistakes they may hold on to ideologies i do not agree with but i love the body of christ I love the body of Christ. My God is not only the God of Koinonia. He is the God of the body. And I'm telling you, ministries may make mistakes. We may all have our shortcomings. But the church is marching on. Regardless of the mistakes, regardless of the imperfections, the church is marching on. And the Bible says that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail hallelujah we are going to pray in one minute pray for every denomination every pastor and every wounded soldier in the body i like you to say lord i repent from adding to their pain it was with my mouth i spread the news that destroyed them lift your voice and pray lord i pray I pray the same mouth I want to use to prophesy and speak to destinies I have torn down pastors torn down churches torn down men of God destroyed wounded soldiers lift your voice and pray and say Lord I repent in sackcloth and ashes I repent in sackcloth and ashes are you praying I love your body I will stand with those who are wounded I will stand with those who are bruised like the good Samaritan when others are condemning them and running away I will reach out with a helping hand I will stake my reputation to see people restored back Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you something. We're rounding up. If there is anyone here who has an issue that you think you are dying with and you need an ear to listen to, I want to tell you, trust us. You can trust this ministry to be able to help you without condemning you. Are we together now? Those who can help people in the body of Christ are rare. There are those who help, but when they help, they will be the same people to destroy you. I don't know how many people's issues are here every day. Sometimes the people are ashamed to open up because they are wondering when they open up. And then when they open up, I just look at them and I smile. and say, you don't know when I started hearing this kind of issue. Let me tell you, there is nothing the ears can hear that I've not heard. So while people are coming and opening up, they are saying, oh, man of God, I don't know how to stand. I say, please, don't waste my time. I'm here to help you. And then whenever they say what they think is the big issue, I just smile. And I say, there is a bomb in Gilead. And I can see the healing. I can see the refreshing. I want to live my life helping people up to love God and walk in the way of righteousness and in the power of the cross yes i will do it a thousand times i will do it please let me tell you i know that we don't have counseling sessions but feel free i will give you a listening ear and i will talk to you and i don't know matter what it is 
there is a way out. Don't ever let anybody conclude on you. Hallelujah. Are we together? Watch this. Benga, come. I'm trying to lift this. And my hand is, I can't lift it. And then a helper comes. And sometimes he can even volunteer to carry everything. And it makes my life easy. The help of God can make a man's life easy. Please, let me preach to you for one minute. I have a responsibility over this house to tell you this and I must say it. Disabuse your mind from this satanic proposal coming from the media that Nigeria is in trouble. Economy, everybody shouting dollar. I'd like you to shout it, count me out. Say it. Shout it one more time. Listen, we are not irresponsible citizens. Don't get me wrong. We sympathize with what is happening in the nation. But if you dare let Satan speak to you, he will destabilize your creativity and crumble your life. People who have been irresponsible since before dollar have found a shield to explain their irresponsibility. Everybody says dollar is rising. Is it not in your Bible when men say Are we together now? He says, you will say there is a lifting up. This is not the first time the economy of the world is going into trouble. The Bible says, in the days of Joseph, it said money failed. Money failed. But there was a secret that was revealed to Joseph. There is what you hold on to that this year can be the most prosperous year in your life. Listen. Listen. God is looking for every opportunity to make a statement. Afford him your life. A Christian is not one who has just received Jesus into his life. A Christian, listen, is one who operates by the principles of the word of God. Our economy is different. And by economy, I don't just mean finances, your health, whatever. There's Lassa fever. There's what again? Huh? There's Zika virus. There's which one again? They are, they are there. It's the one you know you are mentioning. What of the ones that are arrows that fly by day? Have they told you on TV? The Bible. Listen, listen. Psalm 90. Don't turn there. Our time is gone. Psalm 91 said, Thou shalt not be afraid. Of the arrows that fly by day. The noisome pestilence. Right? There are diseases. You breathe them all around. It takes a superior revelation. To keep you. I reject everything. Whose price has been paid on the cross. I will not pay another price again. Are we together? You must understand the implication of your oneness with Christ. So he wants to be your helper. Can you hand over your life and say, God help me. Truly I've tried by myself. If you don't help me, I will never get this admission. If you don't help me, I will never graduate. If you don't help me, my certificate will remain a piece of paper. I will keep mocking myself with my accolades. Listen, if no one has told you, let me tell you again, our world is a cruel and a wicked world. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to trouble anyone. You just need to be alive. That's the condition to be a potential victim. When the Lord told me this, I said, Lord, I first, I receive for myself. I receive for myself. He is my helper. When God comes in to help you, he can round off what has taken you 10 years, 10 years of captivity. Let me tell you something. It doesn't take time when Jesus is there. It doesn't take time. You will be watching the growth. This is how it will live. And you are saying, where is it? It's gone. Who is like him, lion and the lamb?
seated on the throne. Mountains fall and the ocean rolls to the Lord above. You know why I raised that song? If you think there are many gods, I know that we claim we are not idols, but I will show you now that many of us have been practicing idolatry. You know why many people never believe God? We still have options. Your uncle still said, okay, let's just see what happens at the end of the month. So while you are saying, Lord, I trust you, what you mean is, Lord, I trust you through my uncle. Are we together now? Lord, I trust you through that that ceo i met him and he said uh, he will consider my promotion lord i trust you through my job god says he will bless you and you say i know my salary is on his way coming <sighs> lord i trust you and you say i know i there's there's that consultant surgeon he's coming in next week from india and god is just arranging it such that is coinciding with my need who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down every ocean rolls to the lord of lords praise adonai from the rising of the sun to the end of every day Praise Adonai All the nations of the earth All the elders and the saints Sing praise I believe God though I'm a man of faith I believe God He says I know whom I have believed I've seen God help people Even in this place In this place Brothers and sisters There is a mystery of lifting God can take a man you see somebody today and God can lift that person. He, he, they looked at someone and said, when did, we can't see the process. When did Saul become a prophet? A man sleeps as a prisoner. But the next afternoon, he's already a prime minister. Oh, don't play with the God we serve. There is a mystery of the lifting of men. That you are about to die after one month. And after koinonia, you are not only alive, you are carrying the healing anointing. Who is this God that can bring speed to a man? I'm not motivating you. I know him. There is a mighty God who can wipe the tears of people. Let me tell you, this night, before we pray, just take away your mind from anything and everybody. Don't come to God with your calculation and say, Lord, my prayer request, I wrote my uncle, he must answer me, leave that one. Let God choose, if God wants to use a chair to give you a breakthrough, let him give it to you. You've not read that God used a bed to bring bread for a man. Do you think if Elijah had an option, he would choose a bed? Was it not rock that brought water out from people? These things were not done in the spirit. It's just that we truly do not believe God. We think we do, but we don't. There are people who are sick here right now, but may never believe that God can touch them. Listen, don't be so into your challenges that you think tonight God cannot touch you. It's easy to say, okay, God, I'm happy. I, I thank you for what you are doing. No, you must insist. Hallelujah. Luke 18 verse 1, the Bible says, He spake this parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. He said there was an unjust judge. He didn't fear anybody, not God nor man. And there was this poor widow who said, Avenge me my adversary. And for a long time, the man would not respond. And she kept pestering him. When you place a demand with your faith, there is enough grace. There is enough anointing. You can argue this and watch other people stepping into their testimonies. But please tonight, wherever you are, inside and outside, don't make it look like you have come to waste your time tonight. Are we together?
God has revealed to us that he's coming in as a helper. Bless you, my dear. As a helper. As a helper. This ministry has been helped by the Lord. Greatly helped by the Lord. I think it was last week I was sharing the testimony. We don't have the opportunity to share one tenth. And by the way, I want to challenge you. When God blesses you, don't keep quiet. You return back to where you receive the miracle and let the people of God know that this is what God has done. I shared the testimony last week. I think it was last week or two weeks ago when Kaduna, after a meeting, just to have lunch briefly and then rush back. And I'm there and then a woman walks up to order a meal too and she's with a little son. Then I look at this woman and she was looking at me. She said, are you Pastor Joshua? I said, yes, ma. And then she greeted me. And I said, sorry, do I know you? And she smiled. She said, I'll tell you a little story. She said two years ago she came for counseling as wretched it was like she had come to the end of her life i share this to encourage you hallelujah and um she said everything was scattering she was a single mom with a child supposedly no hope for marriage nothing was working they were about to throw her out on her job and I prophesied to her and I said they were going to call her back and send her to the marketing department. She should not be afraid. And she said, man of God, that's exactly what happened. And she looked at me. And she said, can you imagine what has happened in my life? She just put her hand like this and I saw a ring. And she said, I just got married two months ago. And then she said, I should look outside. And there was a clean E-class. She said, who would believe that in two years I'll be the one owning this. My life has changed. Brothers and sisters, if you will believe, God can change your life. If you will argue, he will not argue with you. He will leave you to continue until you find enough reasons. Please, I want you to be angry today as we pray and place a demand on the throne of heaven and say, Lord, you must answer me. Whenever I call you, you will answer me. Elijah called on you and you answered him. Moses called on you and you answered him. That's why I know wherever I call you, you will answer me. Seated here, inside and outside, in all of the overflows, there are people with medical reports that if God does not visit them this night, they are dying for sure. I bring you a message of hope. The helper is in the house. There are families here who are in situations that will take a vigil for them to explain because the, the situation is so scattered, it doesn't have beginning and end. They don't even know where the problem started from. They know that they are in the middle of a situation. But the helper, when he comes, he can make every crooked path straight. There are people here trusting God for children. There are people here trusting God for a turnaround, breakthrough. Do you believe that God is stepping in? The worship team sang so beautiful and they challenged us. Do you believe that God is able to step in? We are going to pray right now. You are not praying for your neighbor. You are not praying on your request. You are going to pray for yourself and say, Lord, please, don't let me go back the same way I came. Lift your voice and pray. Inside and outside, please pray. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 One more prayer point. The power of God is so strong in this place. I'd like you to say, Lord, visit the foundation of my problem and set me free. Please, lift your voice and pray. What you think may be the problem may not really be the problem.
pray. Hallelujah. We're going to sing this song just seven times. And then I'll begin to minister. My goodness. I tell you, God will do extraordinary things in this place. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Praise the miracle worker from who will step into your life, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to One more time. Lord, we will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. Madam, let me talk to you, please. Yes. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. It's time for you to rejoice. The Lord is asking me to destroy witchcraft from your life and your family. Because you love the Lord, but there is a lot of oppression in your life. Is that true? Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that he's ending captivity today from your life. Right now, I command that spirit out by the power of the Holy Spirit. I stretch my hand. Something is leaving you. I'm seeing something being removed from your head. That's what I see happening. You will never be the same again. I command it out. By the authority of the kingdom in the name of jesus christ and god is removing something from your stomach too i'm seeing something leaving your stomach like a growth i command it to go now right now right now i will praise him from everlasting everlasting hallelujah everlasting madam check yourself Give her the mic. Check yourself right now. Your stomach area. Check yourself. What is happening? Look at this. Because I saw that there was something. If I don't pray for you. Huh? There's a movement. There's a movement. Because I'm seeing something. Later they will tell you it's fibroid. Huh? You are, you are even afraid of going to the hospital. The hospital. Yes. Because you think they will tell you it's fibroid. That's really what they would have told you. But today we cancel it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everlasting to everlasting. Gabriel, I'm hearing the name Gabriel. Gabriel, Gabriel. Please, let's save time. Gabriel, you are at that row. You are at the back. That row, at the back. You are a gentleman at the back. That row there. Where is the person, please? Come out quickly. 
You are wearing something like brown, brown shirt or something. Is there someone like that? Who is that? Come. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Mother. Eh? Because I'm seeing another woman. Your mother is here. The Lord is saying I should speak to her. Light is living from you outside. There is a woman outside. She's your mother. Where is she? Is she here? Or at, not outside? At, at the, is he at the edge of the wall or outside? Some, who is that, please? Is she here? Come, Mama. God is wiping the tears of your family tonight. Everlasting to everlasting, Lord, we will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting. Mama, you're welcome. Please stand up. This woman has suffered. I'm looking at this woman and I saw a load on your head that is reaching the roof and she's carrying it alone. Mama, can you hear me? Look at this woman crying. You see, some of you don't know why. God, this is not just showmanship. There are people here just seated close to you. If they tell you their stories, your own story will look like child's play because this woman has suffered. Mama, you are a good woman, but listen, listen. Where, where are you? Are you in Zaria here? In Zaria. What do you do? I need to pray because I'm, I'm seeing this is a cause. I'm a widow. I know. I'm going to pray for you. Do you know why I call this boy? They want to kill him. That's why I want to pray for him. They caught. He might have they caught. This boy might have they caught. I go yesterday. Yesterday we go. They say on the 10th, we come back again. Eh? What caught? He get problem. He might have they caught. If I don't pray for this boy as small as he is, they are going to kill him. Do I know you have a case in the court? Why would we call somebody like don't don't be afraid, Mama? Because this thing will even cause you problem. Um, young man, I will pray for you. Mommy, look at me. This thing is a cause. Huh? The same way they killed your husband, they want to kill this boy and leave you in misery. Huh? Mama, I'm going to pray for you. There is a God that reveals secrets to men. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm seeing a load right to the roof on your head. You are carrying it alone. I will pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is wiping your tears. I'm seeing a mother outside. The Lord is showing me a mother outside. A woman outside. Uh, it's like you are wearing her tie. But it's not like her tie, same material. A tie like a normal this thing. This is a, it's an elderly woman outside sitting just by this side of the window. Please, I need to speak to her. If there is somebody like that, let's have a mother outside. The Lord is showing me. Mama, I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus for God to change your story. I don't know what is in the court, but in the name of Jesus, we will change it. How old are you? You are 14. You will serve the Lord in the name of Jesus. You believe that? Where are you from, Mama? I'm from Edo. You are from where? Edo, from Okwela. Where are you from? You are from Edo State. That's what the Lord is telling me because the same thing He's delivering two of you from. You see that? Mama, I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. God is destroying that spirit father i lay my hands on our mommy 
the back pain look at me mama the back pain you it is, it is, it is. You will be healed now. Amen. Hold my hand. Amen. Look at what is happening to her. Mama, shout Jesus loud. Jesus. Father, hold my hands for your glory. Mama, look at me. Look at me. You see something like fire moving at your back right now. That pain is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Do what you couldn't do. Check yourself. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Look at. Look at you. Help her. Cover her. It will never return to you. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for you my friend. I'm seeing you, but I'm seeing two heads. This is a misidentity. The devil wants to misrepresent you, but I'll pray for you. Huh? Your passion for God. Have good friends. If your friends are not good, leave them this night. May God give you good friends. In the name of Jesus Christ, grace for you. That anointing comes upon you, takes you to a new dimension. This is the woman. Mama, you're welcome. Let's celebrate Jesus. <laughs> I'll pray for you but there is another woman I'm talking about there is another mama outside who needs to come mama I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus you have a daughter yes. where is she she's outside she's outside call her come daughter where are you please come Shim. what's her name Shim. Shim. please you had your name rush and coming our time is gone who is this? I told her to have the one. No. The woman I'm talking about has her tie. Um, it's not the same as the material. It's not the same as the material she's wearing. I'm looking for a head tie that looks close to it. Ladies, now, the normal scarf that you carry and tie. But I will pray for you. Anybody that has come out, I'll pray for you. I don't know why she's here. She is, but I'll pray for you. You are already out. I'll pray for you. Please, let's, let me just minister to those that are here. I'll pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Please, you can return back to your seat. Let me talk to you. Your daughter? Um, Mama, I'm going to pray for you. The Lord is visiting your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. He's visiting your family. And look at me, my dear. God is taking delay from your family. Tell your mother. This is your grandmother, right? Huh? Who is like your mother? She is oh, I see. I, I, oh, I get the story now. Your real mother is dead. This is your grandmother, but she's like your mother now. Oh, I see. Because the Lord is saying, I should tell your mother, whoever is that, that she's going to lift her. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Mama, God is lifting you and is wiping your tears. And the Lord is telling me that he's adding years to your life. Amen. Believe me. Amen. Who is this? Your what? But she have um, son and daughter. You have a daughter. She have a daughter, but she's my elder sister. She's your elder sister. Yes, sir. Okay, I'll talk with you. We have to really rush. Mama, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. The God I serve will bless you. He will honor you. What do you do, my dear? I'm a student. Where? Maybe you here. Maybe you here. I'll pray for you. God is bringing favor upon your life. Look at me. You will really be a blessing to mama and make sure you bless her with all your heart in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you right now in the name of jesus bless you mama come come two of you you love jesus are you part of them come you love jesus no you are stubborn come you need to be prayed for come you don't love jesus you are you are very stubborn 
but Jesus loves you. You are a stubborn boy. You have bad friends. You don't listen. We have to pray for you. There is a spirit disturbing you. You need to be delivered. Let her go right now. Out! Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands. I command that devil. Hmm? They want to make your sister mad. Eh? What's wrong with her? It's mad, sir. She's mad. Yes, sir. This is madness. She will be free right now. She came here mad. You are joking. This is koinonia. I command that spirit. She's mad. Out! You must go right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Release her hands. Release her hands. Hold me. Hold me. I command that madness. How can a lady like this be mad for God's sake? I command that spirit. They must leave you right now. In the name of Jesus, I set you free by the spirit of the Christ. Jesus, for your mercy, for your glory. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. This lady is not just mad. This was supposed to be an initiation. Hold on, please. This is a serious issue. This is supposed to be an initiation into the occult. This is not just mad, like occult, fly. This is occult. An occultic thing it's not just madness and you if they don't pray you don't listen you are small but God will help you eh? don't be angry you have to leave your bad friends you hear me if not soon now you start taking a uh, what's that thing that cough syrup huh you hear what I'm saying yes sir huh yes sir please don't be embarrassed we're not we're not here to embarrass people you get what I'm saying we're not here to embarrass people I have to pray for you. What do you do? Um, I'm vibing in Sokoto. Eh? I'm staying with my elbow daughter in Sokoto. No, that's not what you are doing. Hold what? on. Why am I seeing a clipper? I'm vibing in Sokoto. You say you are staying with your brother. I'm seeing a clipper. Come. You two, two of you, God needs to help you. You are a good boy, but there, there's bad influence around your life. God even needs to visit your brother in Sokoto. Eh? You believe what I'm telling you? Yes, you came from Sokoto? Yes, sir. All the way? Yes, sir. This one, where did he come from? He's staying with my mom here. Yeah. He's staying with your mom. Is your mom here? No, sir. She's not here. I have to pray for you. Huh? Um, when, I'm, when I make the altar call, I'll make the altar call. Once you just hear the altar call, just run and come out. Hmm? It's time to be very serious. Jesus Christ will help you. You're a great person. Huh? You are a great person. You don't have any business doing what you are doing now. What took you to Sokoto? I went to school. Are you a student? No, sir. I have not gotten to admission yet. Your school is not Sokoto. Come back. Don't think somebody will manipulate you and do wrongs for you to get this and that because what you want to do is not very good. Eh? It's not a godly thing you want to do to get admission. Let's do things correctly. Huh? What do you want to study? Computer science. This is not computer science. I'm seeing IT. Something that has to do with, with IT. And God will bless you, but you need to settle down. Because the way you are desperate for admission now, you can you do everything. Have you written jam? Um, you are writing jam. On Tuesday. Huh? Tuesday. Well, I won't say it here. Be careful. Just be careful. You hear what I'm saying, Abi? You know what I'm saying. Yes, be careful. Eh? Because you can't want God to help you. And you're already doing arranging. You know what I'm saying now? All these funny things people do for jam. What is not your own is not your own. I'm not embarrassing you. The Lord will step in and the Lord will bless you. Just hold that lady and let me minister to you. Who is this? Please, if I don't... Yes, Mama, Mama, call me. Please, if I don't call you, you don't come out. Mama, I want to pray for you. You do business. Because you are supposed to do, there is business that God has been putting in your heart. Huh? Is that true? God, I see you do business. What you are getting from civil service is not enough to take care of you. And God wants to open a door for you, a business door. 
You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to pray for you because God wants to really give you prosperity this year. Okay, thank you. Regina, Regina, I hear a name Regina. Regina, Lord, in the name of Jesus, step into our mother's life. Do a miracle for her right now in the name of Jesus. I hear a name Regina. Regina, please, who is that? Do we have anybody outside? Regina, you are outside. There's nobody, we just move to the next case. You are Regina. Come, what do you do? I'm a saloonist. You are a saloonist. I need to pray. Bad luck. God wants to take away bad luck from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's marriage was cancelled. Come out, please. Your marriage. Who is that? No, not you. Somebody's marriage. I'll pray for you. Don't worry. You were supposed to. You've even started the arrangement. They just cancelled it like this. And your heart is pain. Please come out. I want to pray for you. Let's just flow as the Holy Spirit is giving us grace. You are Regina. In the name of Jesus, God is giving you favor. Please don't sit back. This is a serious issue. In the name of Jesus. I lay hands on you. Please go back. I don't have to speak over your life. Once I lay hands on you. What do you do? I just graduated. Eh? Graduated from school. You just graduated. I have to pray for you. Because you love God. Yes, sir. mind is who is supposed to they've started your marriage planning please come my sister I, I don't mean to embarrass you you get what I'm saying is to speak over your life you too what category are you here for huh? Regina okay I'll pray for you who has sickle cell S there's a sickler here now you are the one please indicate eh, sweetheart. come Hold my hands. Look at me. Father, please do a miracle for this lady. You have changed several genotypes in this place. Change her genotype right now. In the name of Jesus. From SS to AA. Do it for her in the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, let me pr please. Um, are you based in Zaria here? Are you part of our prayer department? Yes, sir. Please be serious eh? and pray because uh, it's not just prayer department. After Koinonia, you can meet the media and listen to the messages. They will help you. You love Jesus, but your mindset is still very serious and you can do anything, especially men. So please, you will listen to that message and the Lord will help you. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, come. I don't know what happened. I don't want to ask you. Please don't feel embarrassed. Huh? When do you want to settle down? It was supposed to be December last year. It was supposed to be December last year. What happened? You called me and said I should forget about everything. The guy called you and just told you he's not doing again. Yes, sir. Did he give you a reason why? No reason. Okay, let me tell you. Weep not. God saved you from heartache. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please. See, let me tell you, if you don't have the eyes of the spirit, you will be fighting God not knowing. Are we together now? I'm sorry to say, don't feel bad, don't feel embarrassed. You see that guy? It was three of you. You are not the only one. You have been sensing that there's another lady. The other lady promised to do him something if he doesn't leave you. That's why he quietly called out of fear and all of that. That he's, he may be a sincere person, but him and women, he's even a spirit, he needs help. Let me pray for you, that God will bring the man he has destined. You're a very nice lady. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon her. Father, send into her life the man, a, a responsible and God-fearing man. In the name of Jesus Christ, and for your shame, may my God give you double. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Let me just talk to two people and then we'll... Madam, please come. 
that woman, can I talk to you? Please clear the way for her. Madam, please come. Please, let's pray. Go ahead and pray. Pray in the spirit. Say, Father, visit me. Madam, please look at me. I have to pray for you. Something is tying your finances down completely. Yes, sir. That's the major reason why you came. Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, you were asking the Lord to visit your finances. Yes, sir. Because everybody will see you now and think things are just working, but the truth is nothing is really working. Yes, sir. You need a serious miracle in that area. That's true, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. Are you married? Yes, but now I'm out of Hold on. Place. Don't worry. You don't, just answer. You don't have to embarrass yourself. Because there is a spirit. Huh? This spirit brings bad luck on your life. People come to you and then in a few weeks or months, they will now fight you. This is still what happened in your marriage. It's true, sir. Because the man has gone. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, is that true? Are you in your yes, husband's house now? No, sir. You are not in your husband's house. The yes, Lord is bringing a miracle for you. Amen. What do you do? I'm a hairdresser. You are? Hairdresser. Do you believe in tithing? Yes, sir. You tithe? No. Don't feel embarrassed. This is the one thing the devourer is marching in and out of your life because tithing is not in place. Please believe it. It's not a gimmick by men of God. Is she your friend? Because I'm seeing light from you to her. You know her. Eh? Why have you not been talking to her about tithing? Even last week you discussed with her. No, 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 don't feel bad. Madam, please, look at me. Tithing is not a gimmick by men of God. Believe me. You understand what I'm saying? It's the access point the devil is using. Where is your husband, the man now? He's at home now. Has he married? You want to get I will discuss with you, eh, madam. This is not something we will say in public. It's a very serious issue. But I need to pray for you. But for now, I need to pray for you. There is bad luck. And we need to pray against it. Please don't feel bad. God is about to change your life. Please hold my hands. In the name of Jesus. I command that spirit. See, there is a spirit that is making this thing happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go. Release her right now. That spirit leaves you. Madam, go and prosper. You will prosper in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Um, there's a baby that is sick. I have to pray for that baby. I'm seeing a baby that is very sick. Very small baby. Sick. Your child? Is she sick? Yes, sir. What's wrong with her? She's having difficulties in breathing. Difficult in breathing. Difficulty in breathing. How old is the baby? It's five months. Five months. This is not the only baby. There's another one. Come, come. I'll pray with you. What did the doctors tell you about the baby? Syndrome. They said it's what? That is Down syndrome patient. Down syndrome. Yes, sir. We soon need doctor. Ah, you are a doctor now. Down syndrome. At least I know I don't know what causes it, but I know how it do please come, come, come and talk to us. Give us some little education. Let's cast this. Um, it's a congenital disorder. And the difficulty in breathing is most likely coming from a congenital heart disease. It mostly manifests with congenital heart disease. Then there are other um, manifestations too. From the fishy, you can um, see some of the manifestations also. I don't know what you said, but all <laughs> I know. <laughs> Most likely, the difficulty in breathing is coming from a congenital heart disease. We are going to pray. This, this baby... believe that this child ah god do a miracle 
in the name of Jesus. Hold him. Am I holding him right? Jesus Christ. Father, by the blood of Jesus, do a miracle in this child. We change this situation in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let there be a miracle in Jesus' name. I'm seeing one more child. Though. Who is that? Please hold the child. You are the one who needs the healing first. Just hold the child. I hope the child will not cry. I have to pray for you. Huh? Something is really fighting you. Huh? This is witchcraft. Let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command you, you know my voice. In the name of Jesus, she's been translated from the kingdom of darkness into light. And you must let her go. I'm seeing this lady in the realm of the spirit like a tree that is, is refused from moving. Hold my hands. You must be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those dreams, those oppressions, I come against them in Jesus' name. Let's pray for the baby. What's wrong with the baby? She has been coughing and stooling. Coughing and stooling. Baby, how are you? In the name of Jesus Christ, we speak to you. No more coughing. In the name of Jesus Christ, perfection in your body. I release the power of the Holy Spirit upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus. The power flows through this baby. In Jesus' name. I hope the usher will help out. Because I'm sensing this anointing even on her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Baby, we take away everything that is not of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. Where is the man in your life? Okay. I'll pray with you. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing something that is serious, but I'll talk, I'll talk about it. Okay? The Lord is showing me something that is quite serious. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. There are 13 people here. There is a strong influence of confusion and stagnation. Please listen. 13 people here right now, inside and outside. I'm going to pray for you right now. Wherever you are, as I begin to pray, it's like fire. It will come upon you. Confusion, stagnation. At least 13 people I see in the spirit. Please lift your hands. Don't say anything. Just lift your hands. I'll do the praying. Let's just flow the way the Holy Spirit is praying. Lord Jesus, I'm praying right now by the ministry of angels. 13 people by the influence of the spirit. I stand under this apostolic anointing and I pray right now. Wherever you are, inside and outside, right now as I pray, that fire starts coming upon them right now. Right now, bring them out. 13 people. 13 people by the power of the Holy Spirit. I end it right now. There are still people outside, inside. That same people by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Bring them out, please. Right to the back. Right to the back. Right to the back. Right to the back. I'm seeing fire. It's like a spirit that would jump out of you. Right to the back, inside, outside. I command that confusion outside. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is resting on people. Confusion. All the overflows. In the name of Jesus, confusion must come to an end right now. Delay. Let 
Lift your hands. I tell you, there will be a mighty baptism outside. Outside, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. When you shout it, I see altars on fire. Are you ready now? Outside, one, two, three. Bring them. Bring them. Fire is falling outside. The Bible says, while men slept, hear me, there are things that tie the destinies of men. Jesus already paid the price. That's why we are doing what we are doing. The authority is that of Jesus Christ. Bring them in. Now listen. Listen. My goodness. You are going to lift your hands for your family. I see the angels of the Lord bringing deliverance for families. Listen. At the count of three, I tell you, wherever you are, I like you to shout Jesus with all your heart. Some of you, you are representing an altar of God for your family. And the moment you do that, in the name of Jesus, there will be a miracle. One, Father for families, let the soul of the Spirit go from the north to the south, east and the west of every family. Right now at the count of three. One, two, three. Families, 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 the sword of judgment. Pray, pray. Make sure you're praying. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now those outside listen. I came out because your destiny must open up. Lift your hands. I came out to bring the atmosphere of God's presence. Hear me. There is no one here whose destiny has been tied that that spirit will remain. I'm going to, listen. I'm going to begin to walk around. My goodness, I see angels by my left and right. As I begin to move across this place, the fire of God will start falling. Right now, I stand under this apostolic office and I declare my hands. Right now, right now, right now. I command that right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fire, 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 fire. Every spirit. Every devil from my left, my right, outside, outside, my left, my right, every devil right now. I stretch my hands. Every spirit. Go, 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 go. I command every spirit right now. Release them. Release them right now. Release them. Release them. Hallelujah. 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 Those of you here, lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm going to shout Jesus just two times. And I see like a tornado. It's like the spirit will start moving right to the back. That's what the Lord is saying I should shout. There are spirits, time men. It's your time to go now. Jesus, get ready now. Get ready now. Jesus, go, go, go out, out right now. My left and my right, I release spirit right now. 
right now, right now, right now, those spirits, I command them to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Out, 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 out by the power of the Holy Spirit. I command right now, right now, I stretch my hands towards you, every force tying you down in the name of Jesus. He must release you right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now listen. Those of you outside don't think you are missing anything at all. That's why I came out. I'm going to all the overflows. Those of us here. You may be outside. But let me tell you something. God will step into your destiny. Please lift your hands. Because I'm seeing chains from where this camera is right to the end. I'm seeing chains. Lift your hands. I want you to shout Jesus just once at the count of three. And everybody under that influence must go right now. Please be careful with anybody close to you so that you don't stampede them. Father, I chains of bondage. But you organize this meeting to recover destinies. Therefore, at the count of three, it will come like fire on some of you. One two three right now right now right now right now right now right now i cost that spirit i cost that spirit i cost that spirit let that go right now in the name of jesus 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 the lord is giving you a new song a new song the lord is wiping your tears you on green lift your hands take it now receive right now by the power of the holy ghost Mama, the Lord is saying I should tell you he's wiping your tears. God is wiping your tears. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is saying what you could not do in five years. You, Mama, in five years. He's making to happen for you in one year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sir. I have to pray there's delay in your life the lord wants me to break the spirit of delay i hope you are not embarrassed sir no. hold my hand sir something will happen to you remarkably right now take it that devil of delay out of his life right now out out i don't know who this man is but he's stepping into a new level god is wiping the spirit of delay in the name of jesus i'm seeing in the spirit the name a boy a boy state someone here from a boy state god is bringing a miracle at my back that person is at my back a boy state god is bringing a miracle wherever that person is in the name of the lord jesus christ who is margaret margaret i'm hearing the name margaret you are in this place oh no 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 there's a lady here margaret i'm seeing the lord is shining who is that come margaret you are Margaret. Look at me. The Lord is wiping the tears of your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that spirit to leave your family right now. I see a family of five ladies. None is married. A family of five ladies. The Lord is showing me. Five ladies. None is married. None is married. He's on the wheelchair. How long have you been? Seven years. What happened to you? You were shot. I'm a military personnel. Oh, you're a military personnel. Yes, sir. And you've had to leave the army because of it. Or you are still there. Still the service, but then you need to walk. Yes, sir. Wow. You can't feel. No, I cannot feel. You can't feel this leg right it's now. A spinal cord injury. Oh, it's a spinal cord. A lumbar problem. Yes, sir. I'll pray with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a family of five ladies, please. I have to talk five ladies none of them is married five ladies none is married no one among them is married God needs to do a miracle 
please make sure that we confirm the situation. Five ladies, so that we don't say yes. we are faking it. Please make sure. Yes, yes. Five ladies, where yes, are you from? Yes, I'm from Edo State. You are from Edo State? Yes, yes. You two? Five, you two? You are together? Oh, you are his sister? No. You are his friend? So why are you here with him? To back him up? Oh, five ladies, yes. Okay. Okay, I'm going to pray for you right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit. There is a spirit that brings delay in your family. And I take authority over that spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right now. There's somebody around here. You are into book selling. Bookstore business. God wants to increase somebody's bookstore business. Here. I'm sensing it. I don't know if there's anybody here. You are into selling of books. The Lord is saying prophesy increase to that person. Jordan is you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Jordan. You step into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Ah, but you are not related to him. You just came out. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for the people here. I hope they can hear me. Hallelujah. There's somebody I need to pray for here. Call that lady. Call that lady. You. Don't think distance is a barrier. Believe me. God can fish you out from anywhere. Look at me. I know you are standing by the fence, but God is wiping your tears. He's giving you a new song. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release that anointing upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. God has answered your prayer. You are praying that I minister to you. You and your friend. Where is your friend? Where is he? Lift up your hands, two of you. You will step into an anointing. Uh, hold your hands together. In the name of Jesus. Look, I stretch my hands. Right now, let a fire come upon both of you. Right now, right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You step into a strange dimension. Let me talk to the people here. I want everybody to be able to know that when you come for this meeting, it doesn't matter where you are. God can visit you. No, don't worry, just, just leave the person. Grace. I hear a name, Grace. 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 There's someone with the name Grace. Is there someone like that? Grace. Grace. I need to pray for Grace. 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 And I'm hearing Garba. Garba. I'm hearing a name, Garba. God is ministering to somebody, I don't know if it's a son name or a name, Garba. In the name of Jesus, Garba, where are you? Your name is Garba? Your son name is Garba. Where is your dad? He's outside, he's in Saudi Arabia. He's, a, he's, he's in Saudi Arabia. Because I'm seeing God is saying, look at me. God is saying I should tell you that there's going to be increase for your family. Okay. And so, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. You have to be very serious with me. You are going to be very wealthy. You are going into oil and gas. Amen. Are you hearing me? I don't know you. I don't know anything about you. But I'm seeing that you are going into oil and gas. And God is going to honor you. God will bring a man into your life. Bless you. I'm seeing three people here. You are writing jam next week. Jam. No, no, not everybody. Hold on, hold on. Just relax. I'm going to pray for everybody. Here, where I'm standing. You are writing jam. Three people. Right in jam. Somebody is writing it for the fourth time. That person, you are the one. This will be the last time. Do you know me? Come, come and stand. What, please remind me in case I forget. This jam thing, we have to settle it once and for all. Please. People are writing this thing again and again. I curse that spirit. This overflow, these ones looking at me, please lift your hands. Not these ones, those ones, exactly. Please lift your hands. Please don't think that because of the distance, all right, God cannot touch you. There is a reason why I'm coming out with this because sometimes inside is just a fraction of those outside. And I want you to feel a sense of belonging to know that 
God is able to visit you and to minister to you. Hallelujah. Those outside here, there are at least two of you. Fire is coming upon you right now. I see the power of darkness being broken. Lord, where are they? Right now, I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stand upon this anointing. Wherever they are, Father, there is a lady right now. It's like fire is coming upon you. Right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that fire is coming upon you. All of you standing here, I prophesy to you. In the name that is above all names, hear me. Whatever has tied your progress, I'm talking to those here. I stand under this anointing and I declare a change of story right now. Benway State. There's someone here from Benway. Benway. Um, Benway State. You have an elder brother. Please make sure that you don't come out. We are not faking this thing, please. You have an elder brother. Where? I'm going to pray for you. God is visiting your family. Visiting your family in strange ways. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying I should tell you that if you seek him with all your heart, he will surprise you. I hear what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm seeing a lot of families here under financial stagnation. And the Lord is saying release them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please listen, listen. Please believe what I'm saying. Don't come and waste your time. God brought you here to wipe your tears. Any family here. You have tried and tried and tried. Doors have refused to open. I open it for you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see somebody here. You are looking for a job. June. Um, you are looking for a job in Abuja by June. I see a job coming. This is what God is saying. I don't know who I'm speaking. But God is many somebody. Your name is Grace. Where is your mother? Kogi State. I need to pray for you because there is witchcraft. I take authority over that spirit. Of Jesus. I need to pray for somebody. Two of you. I want you to follow me. You smoke this thing. Um, what's the name of that? It's not just stab out. Weed. Please, don't be embarrassed. Two of you, you really smoke it. You love the Lord, but this thing is a challenge. Please follow me. Your deliverance has come. You smoke weed. Your own is not just uh, all that cigarette. Please, don't be embarrassed. Follow me and I'll, I'll pray for you. And brother here, listen. Listen, God is speaking to you. You came for koinonia, but you left a lady in your room. You left a lady in your room. You told her you are coming for koinonia and you will come back. Please, don't destroy yourself and destroy that lady because your going back now is to get that lady pregnant and you'll be in trouble. God is saving you. Send her a text now to go home. You are born again. One, once I make altar call, wherever you are, please march to the front. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The power of God is coming on some ladies here. I've seen a, some at least three ladies severe menstrual pain. This is not this is something that for one of you is in your family. Lift your hands, please. Just here, this region. Right now, the fire of God is going to come on some ladies. I take authority over that spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, right now, I curse that spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, a lady will feel like fire on her stomach right now. It will come upon you like fire. I take authority over it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And there is a lady that the Lord is showing me. For four months, you have not seen your period. Four months, you have not seen your period. I think you need to talk to your friend to help you because before the end of this meeting is returning in the name of Jesus Christ I see someone's family um, like relative in prison 
there's somebody here like that in prison one of your relatives i don't know if it's in a police station or prison something like that god is doing a miracle who is that there's somebody like that you're the one come who is in prison your nephew are you sure which prison is in gobe state how long is his tenure Five years. Five years. How many years has he done? One. One year. We are going to pray for mercy. You will not reach five years. We are going to bring him out. You believe that? Yes. Lift your hands for him. And let the name of Jesus step in and give him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift your hands, my dear. Look at me. I'm seeing a crown being put on your head. You. This. Are you hearing me? God is bringing you into a new dimension of grace. Father, I stretch my hands to her right now. Right now. That fire comes upon you right now in the name of Jesus. Let me talk to the lady with the pink cap. You, lift your hands. Beauty for ashes. That's what God is saying is bringing. Beauty for ashes in the name of Jesus Christ. God is bringing a restoration to your family. Your family's experience is for a restoration. You. In the name of Jesus. Joseph. Joseph, I hear you. Joseph. Joseph, you are wearing a short dress. Joseph, you are wearing a short dress. Joseph. You are in the crowd. I will pray for you. But the Joseph is inside the crowd. God wants to lift you. Lift your hands. Something will come on you. You are a student. You are a papa. God is wiping you. In the name of Jesus Christ, a new dimension of grace. You are Joseph. Look at me. What are you studying? Are you a student? You are done with German. What do you want to study? Agri. You are going to be a businessman. And God is going to honor you. Too. In the name of Jesus, Joseph John, where is he? Come. Why did you stop doing business? There's an anointing for you. Go back and the Lord will honor you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come. Where is your mother? Where is the village? The Lord is saying, I should tell you, the way he would lift you, all those who know you will be surprised. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord will lift you. Eh? Because I'm seeing your story similar to that of Esther in the Bible. Go and read the story of Esther. How that God can pick somebody who is supposedly nothing. Someone's sister here is barren. Who is that person? Barren. The Lord is saying it's time for the child. Not you or your sister. Is how many years? Six years. You follow me. How, how many years? Eleven years. Two of you come. The Lord is responding. You too. Please follow me. Madam, look at me. Confusion is ending in your life. Come. Come. The Lord is bringing an end to confusion in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, everyone, lift your voice and pray and say, Father, you are changing my story. There is a habit God is setting you free from. It's a terrible habit right now. Be free. It's not a habit you should practice at all. God is setting you free from it. Somebody here has eye problems. No, no, no. Not eye. I'm going to for you. There's somebody here with eye problem. Your eye pains you if you see light. Who is that person? You get discouraged easily. God is saying that you should be sure not be discouraged. Who is the person, please? Lay your hands on your hands. In the name of Jesus. Step into your mind. Let's go. I'm on my way to better days. Those things, please, please follow me. Status is changing. No more. 
The Lord is bringing you to a new dimension. I'm on my way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord wants to release certain kinds of miracles right now. Who are all these people following me, please? Hold on. The Lord wants to release fruitfulness. Please be sensitive, everybody, inside and outside. He's using children as a point of contact, but this will affect every other area's life. Every other body's. Um, how many years? Six. Six years. Your sister, yes. where is she? She's in Zara. How about you? 11 years. Oh my God. My auntie. 11 years. Ah. Why didn't they come for the miracle service? She's in Abuja. No, 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 no. Please, don't, don't just come out carelessly. Please, please. Okay, come out. The Lord is asking me to let you come out. Please. I'm going to pray for the sick, but barrenness issue. Let's deal with it right now. Tonight, I want God to step into people's lives. I think you should honor what Jesus is doing in this place. Look at the number of issues. Believe me, when I tell you there will be testimonies. If you are standing here for yourself, just move this way. If you're standing for yourself, move this way, please, so that I know. Please, just move here. I will worship him forever, love him forever, because this God is too good. Please, this way, just let there be a separation. My, my brothers and sisters, please see how many people the devil is tying down. The Lord is bringing you into an anointing. It's a healing anointing that is coming on you. I see an angel of the Lord pouring like oil upon your head. You, you looking at me. Something is being activated in your spirit, man. Step into that oil, that fountain. It's that healing anointing. Koinonia, please, I want you to know that this is a platform that God has created to wipe the tears of men. As we gather there every week, God is doing something. Please be patient with God tonight and let him do something in your life. Because I have to pray for the sick. I'm only going to lay hands on those who are standing here for themselves because I want them to return with the testimony. But for all of us who are connecting for other people, you, lift your hands. You, out, right now, right now. It's a curse upon the family. You are going by the spirit of the living God. Right now, you are a devil of darkness. I see you in the spirit and there must be that release right now. Please, those of us here, talk to the Lord on behalf of your loved ones and say, Lord, you must change your story. You must change your story. Those of us here, I'm going to lay hands on you by you. Please pray. Thank you, Jesus. All right, lift your hands, everyone, here. This category, just lift your hands, please. For time's sake, I may not be able to lay hands on you, but I want you to believe. Something is happening to you that is happening to your loved ones. You need to call them and believe. Many of you are receiving for your loved ones. My goodness, I hear the cry of children. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a miracle right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Receive it for your loved ones. Receive it right now. I open wombs, I open wombs, I open wombs. In the name of Jesus, I open wombs. I command a remembrance. A remembrance right now. In the name of Jesus. Right here, we declare miracle children. For your loved ones. 
miracle children they take in right now and nine months after now they give birth to their children in the name of jesus hallelujah please go back to your seat god bless you god bless you those who are standing here i'm going to pray for you please make sure you are married if you are not married please don't embarrass yourself go back to your seat praise the lord let me pray for those who are standing for themselves we have to pray that's why you came hallelujah remember the testimony that god gave a woman who had been barren for eight years how many years eight solid years and god gave her triplets they are still alive till today triplets triplets please i want you to believe god if you are standing husband and wife no problem you are standing for your wife no problem just make sure you are married that's the only thing we're saying please i'm going to pray for you stretch your hands over them and pray because we'll release fruitfulness right now in the name of jesus i don't care what the problem is jesus is stepping in my confidence the source of my strength are you the strength of my life are you my open my joy are you hey, my confidence are you Looked around and I suddenly realized that you've been so good to me. Your, Your mercy is everlasting, undenying, overwhelming. I tell you, celebrate God because this will end. Who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you hear my call when I call you? Who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you hear my call? The source of my strength are you? The strength of my life are you? My open, my joy are you? My confidence are you? The source of my strength are you? The strength of my life are you my up and my joy my confidence hey, I exalt you oh God I exalt I release this miracle madam go and return back with your child in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus let this womb be open in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus let there be a miracle in the name of Jesus madam you are coming back with a testimony what is there has been removed in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord wipes your tears right now in the name of Jesus where is your husband sir please stand near your wife there's a reason why the Lord is asking can you hold her hands hold on I don't care what the doctors say you are returning with your testimony The Lord is giving you a baby girl and then a baby boy. I know you want a boy, but God is giving you a baby girl first and then a boy in the name of Jesus. Make sure you come and testify. God bless you. In the name of Jesus, a miracle. A miracle. But there are still three more cases we'll deal with very fast we'll pray for this just for one minute and then 
I'll begin to prophesy. There are people who have not yet received what they came for here. Please, just be patient with us. Please, this is a miracle service, right? So that we can justify our coming. Please, let's rise. We'll just do this in one minute. I'd like you to believe. Stretch your hands here right now. Stretch your hands in one minute and let's pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards the prayer request and let's pray. Prophesy over it. Your request is here. Lord, we turn it into a testimony. Please make sure those outside their requests are here too. If they are here to collect your request, just wave it inside and outside and somebody will come and attend to you. Are you praying? Prophesy. Father, this must become a testimony in my life. This must become a testimony in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you answer prayers in this place. Shebakarota supra di shebererebosh. Let there be miracles, oh God. Let there be breakthroughs, oh God. Supernatural miracles. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Miracles upon miracles. Miracles. Visit everyone. Visit issues of concern. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I prophesy over this request in the name that is above all names. That every request represented here, no matter how impossible it is, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, let every dead situation here come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, my God, we sang that you are not a man. Turn every captivity here. Turn every captivity here. In the name of Jesus. Now, I want to prophesy to us. Please lift your hands. Um, you don't have to bring them out. It will be... Just give me 10 more minutes, but it's going to be extensive prophecy. Extensive prophecy. I want to speak to you because... I know the things that I see things in the spirit that have not yet been received. We have to pray in the name of Jesus. Please, I want you to believe God and lift your hands. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. The Lord is starting off with direction. There are people here who came praying, Lord, what is the next step of my destiny? Wherever you are, I'm prophesying to you. As I speak, fire will come upon you just on your head. Some of you will start feeling fiery sensations on your ears. The Lord is bringing direction right now. I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Right now. Right now. Supernatural direction. Help that guy. In the name of Jesus. Every confusion in your life. Those outside, make sure you participate. Someone is asking, oh God. What is the next step? I pray by this anointing, receive direction right now. Receive direction right now. In the name of Jesus. Someone's marital destiny is under siege. Right now, in the name that is above all names. An anointing, a yoke breaker anointing. I prophesy, receive it right now. I open those doors right now. Inside, outside. I open those doors right now. Hallelujah. There's someone praying. You are asking God for money for rent. Rent. The Lord is telling me that between now and Monday morning, there is a miracle coming for you. There is a miracle coming for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are ladies who have, even guys, this spell of disfavor. Please listen. In the name of Jesus, you will literally feel like something being wiped out of your face. 
I see many people being affected by this. Lord, where are they? That mark of this favor. By this anointing. Right now. Right now. I break that mark. Right now. Inside, outside. In the name of Jesus. I tell of that mark. Kaparataka Latoshia. That mark of this favor. That embargo of bad luck. Upon your life. That makes things not to work. I come against it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. You have come to the end of your road. And if God does not step in, there will not be any way out. I pray for you. That door closed over your destiny. That will not allow you to move to the next level. I stand under this anointing in this miracle service and I prophesy. I command that door to open right now. Oh, come on. Believe it. Believe it. I command that door to open. Shakatata. Deke poroso bariata. I command that door to open. Swing open. In the name of Jesus. Whatever has been emerged from heaven to enter your hand, and is yet to enter your hand. Please stretch your hands towards me. Shala kataya. In the name that is above all names. I stretch my hands back. Receive it right now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it right now. Everything that must enter your hand. Inside and outside. I command it. From the realm of the spirit. I deliver it to your hands. In the name of Jesus. hallelujah everything that has refused to grow in your hand ideas businesses please listen everything that has refused to grow in the name that is above all names return and cause it to grow return and cause it to grow i command that business grow I command your family grow. I command your finances grow. I command your ministry grow. Hallelujah. I pray for you. You hear me pray this all the time. Because I've seen what it can do in the life of a man. Where are your destiny helpers? If there is one prayer you must receive in this place listen god can use men to help a man and in one day god can bring the right people to wipe your tears lift your hands in the name of jesus the son of the living god where you have struggled and struggled with no hope of help as you lift your hands let an anointing from heaven land upon your life and call help us right now right now right now i release that anointing upon you for help for help for help for help take it receive it the anointing listen all you need in your life one person can just tell you do a b c or i know a who can do b for you and it can open you up to a whole new world one more time i pray i call them from the north the south if they are in zaria here we call them if they are in kaduna state we call them any part of nigeria receive their ministry now receive their ministry now Whoever has vowed to destroy your life, I'm praying. Oh, this is judgment. In the name that is above all names. If there is any human entity standing there, I declare, let this night be a night of judgment. Let this night be a night of judgment. Let this night be a night of judgment. 
Listen. When Pharaoh refused to allow Egypt, Israel go, God took his firstborn. Whatever must be taken from your enemy to let you go, we take it tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. Let me tell you the truth. There are men that hold the destinies of people low. I teach you principles of success. But I'm spiritual enough to know a man's destiny can be kept at a standstill. Whoever kept your destiny at a standstill, in the name that is above all names, I put an anointing upon you. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. In the name of Jesus. Go forward. I prophesy in your career. Go forward. In every area of your life. Hallelujah. Let me speak over our finances. You see what is happening around the nation. Father, we believe in the power to prosper. And we believe in favor. Ah, there is such a thing, my brother and my sister, called favor. Lift your hands. My God and my King. That anointing for favor that was on Joseph. That anointing that made five loaves and two fish to feed 5,000 people. Wherever you are, may that anointing come on your life right now. Kaparatata. It's coming on people. May that anointing come upon you. It comes upon you right now. Hallelujah. Some of us are moving, but our pace is too slow. That's the truth. We need acceleration. We are moving, but your pace is too slow. There are things you should do in two weeks, not three years. There are things you should do in one day. I'm praying for you. The Bible says, and the hand of God came upon Elijah. And he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. The anointing that must come upon you, that between now and next month miracle service, what has not happened from when Koinonia started, may the God that I serve release it into your life. I command speed, 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 speed. I prophesy it, speed. Hallelujah. All those writing jam, lift your hands. It's time for you to move forward. If you are not writing, you can stand in for somebody, maybe your loved ones or whatever. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, and when they were tested in all matters of wisdom, hear me, Daniel was found ten times better. That ten times better unction. As you write your jam, may the angel of wisdom cause you to pass this jam in the name of Jesus. There are people who suffer and read and sit there in front of that computer and don't know what to do. You will know what to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm led to pray for those in final year. I don't know why, but the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. We need to release you. There are things that have come up. Some of us, physically speaking, it's obvious there is trouble. Where is that God who can correct a man's mistake? I pray for you. In the name that is above all names, you will graduate this year. I said you will graduate this year. I don't know how it will happen, but you must graduate this year. Hallelujah. The secret, receive this, two more and we are done. The secret the ideas, the strategy you need for the next level of your life. I'm praying for you. Please lift your hands. There will be a strong impartation. God is releasing anointings for creativity. Some of it will come upon you. You will not know why. But when you sleep, you will see it in dreams. My God, I'm praying. I see this thing falling on at least 40 people. In the name that is above all names. That anointing for creativity. Receive it right now. 
right now right now right now an impartation an impartation an impartation an impartation inside outside inside outside take it take it take it creativity ideas i send them from the spirit concept right now right now business ideas career ideas hallelujah now i'm going to pray the last prayer breakthrough you don't know what breakthrough is some of you let me tell you what breakthrough is breakthrough is when the barrier standing between you and the next level is not lifted destroyed if it's lifted it can appear in your future please listen some of us what you need is breakthrough you don't even know the name of the situation you are in but i pray at the count of three i want everybody to just shout breakthrough as loud as you can and something remarkable will happen i'm seeing rain falling that's what i'm saying father this is the instruction you gave me as we shout hey, yeah, 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 yeah. somebody's husband husband somebody's husband is receiving breakthrough somebody's husband husband at the count of three one two three yes lord receive it receive it receive it malakata baba breakthrough breakthrough i smash those barriers breakthrough in the name of jesus breakthrough i mark you with an anointing that anywhere they see you they will be compelled to bless you listen to what i'm saying i mark you with an unction i mark you with a mystery and i command that anywhere they see you may they bless you anywhere you enter may this anointing force men to bless you anywhere you travel to may this anointing distinguish you isaac blessed his son and said the smell of my son is like the field brothers and sisters hear me there is a fragrance that can come upon a man that will force men to bless you anyhow i don't know who must appear to bless you but i'm saying it again in the name of jesus i mark you with a mystery that forces men to bless you in the name of jesus in the name of jesus hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching